And uh, please, uh, call them into the first hour of the show next week. Uh, we're again going to be live next week. We'll have a lot more stuff to get to, stuff we couldn't get to today. Uh, Calvin, I appreciate all your work. And everyone calling in, I appreciate it. Till next week, well, we'll be back here live again on the No Stay Pride. People of Earth, prepare yourselves. Ah. Admit your stone. <laughs> I have no soul. He cannot pick up a knife to yeah. cut a steak. I find your lack of faith disturbing. I might consider some toe sucking. How much I'm pot just... are you smoking right now? My ball handling isn't so great. Inconceivable. The 27th level of I don't know what you're talking about. You can't handle the truth. This is so hardcore, people don't want to even believe it. It's a story <laughs> about love, for Christ's sake. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Sounds good. I mean, I'm not really sure what it means. Come on! When I think about him, I feel funny inside. It rubs the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. <laughs> Do what you want, man. I got no problem with it. But I'm still going to talk about it. What? You didn't like that? Now it's just way too big. That needs to be censored. Excellent. For more of this insanity, visit BlackSheepRising.org. You have been warned. It's a freaking podcast. Duh. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.lrn.fm. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit the Liberty Radio Network when you shop at Amazon via shop.lrn.fm. Did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. Lock it here for more live content. Free Talk Live is next on the Liberty Radio Network. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Radio VR. Good morning and welcome to Radio VR. We're broadcasting live from Washington, D.C. and around the world on voiceofrussia.com slash U.S. I'm Kate Sickle. And I'm Rick Young. Today is Friday, April 4th, 2014. Radio VR News. The nation mourns the tragic loss of lives at Fort Hood, Texas. Flags are flying at half staff on Capitol Hill to honor the victims of Wednesday shootings at the Army base. Steve Coleman reports. Congressional leaders called for all flags at the Capitol to be lowered Thursday and remain at half staff until sunset Friday. In his prayer opening Thursday's Senate session, Chaplain Barry Black asked God to please be near to the families of the victims of the Fort Hood shooting. On the House side, Congressman John Carter said, I would like to ask the House to join me in a moment of silence and hopefully prayer for the entire Fort Hood community. Steve Coleman, Washington. Crews investigating a radiation leak in the government's underground nuclear waste dump near Carlsbad, New Mexico, hope to make a second trip into the Half Mile Repository later today. Correspondent Ross Simpson explains. Officials say workers who went into the waste isolation pilot plant on Wednesday to install air monitors and communications equipment found no airborne radiation. On Friday, however, they say workers are prepared to encounter contamination as they make their way deep into the mine. If all goes well, officials say that should set the stage for a third entry when crews will try to figure out what caused the release of radiation? I'm Ross Simpson. A bill to renew jobless benefits for the long-term unemployed is heading for a final vote in the Senate. Correspondent Jerry Bodlander has the details. The bill would renew the benefits for more than 2 million Americans who've been out of work for more than 26 weeks and whose benefits have run out since December when the program expired. It cleared the final procedural hurdle with one vote to spare. The yeas are 61, the nays are 35. All the no votes came from Republicans. Unhappy Democrats won't allow votes on some of their employment proposals. Senate passage is set for Monday, though there is little indication the GOP-controlled House will consider the measure. Jerry Bodlander, Capitol Hill. 
Observers are looking for better numbers over February when the Labor Department releases its monthly unemployment report. Correspondent Warren Levinson has the details. Economists anticipate the March numbers will show a job market continuing to thaw out. I expect a good report. John Sylvia, chief economist at Wells Fargo Securities, expects job creation to come in at 198000 with hours worked, wages, and participation all up. What we want to see is more jobs and that the average wage being paid is also up. And that combination gives you a nice boost to personal income. Sylvia says short-term unemployment rates are recovering to where they were a decade ago, but the economy remains grim for those out of work a long time. Warren Levinson, New York. Who doesn't want a pay hike? Believe it or not, Congress. Lawmakers in Congress are again making moves to freeze their pay. Correspondent Carlotta Bradley explains why our elected officials are saying no to that raise. House leaders are engineering another freeze in lawmakers' automatic cost-of-living pay hike. Their proposal would freeze congressional salaries at $174,000 a year and is attached to legislation to fund Congress's budget. It was approved by a House appropriations panel. Lawmakers haven't gotten a pay increase since 2009, with Congress voting to deny itself the raise for five straight years. The scheduled 1.6 percent hike would give lawmakers a raise of about $2,800. Carlotta Bradley, Washington. He was a World War II hero who became president. Now those waiting to visit a national monument to honor former President Dwight Eisenhower are going to have to wait a while longer. Correspondent Jackie Quinn tells us why. The National Capital Planning Commission rejected the current design for a memorial to honor President Eisenhower. The vote is in line with the family's objections to the architect's design. Massive columns holding large stainless steel tapestries framing an expansive memorial park with statues of Eisenhower as president and as a general at the center. The Planning Commission chairman voted for changes to be reviewed every two months, agreeing with those who say it's time to stop the endless debate over a memorial. Jackie Quinn, Washington. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. A majority of Americans are pointing to Friday's tragedy as a clear call for major reforms in everything, or literally anything at all that might prevent acts of horrifying senseless violence. According to a recent ONN poll, the nation is united in saying that the key to preventing future tragedies is a drastic change in gun control, mental health care, school security, media coverage, violent entertainment, the fragility of the human condition, and really so many other things we probably haven't even thought of yet. Yeah, Jesus. The Randolph Center for Public Health and Safety also released a statement saying, quote, if you look at statistics regarding gun violence in the United States, you'll see the recent shooting is a clear cry for any thing at all to please, please be different. In Washington, lawmakers have reached a bipartisan agreement that the U.S. desperately needs tighter firearm restrictions or looser firearm restrictions or, honestly, whatever option just makes these things stop, do that one. This is the Onion News Network. It's Free Talk Live. Now, our normal first chair host, Ian Freeman, is away. I believe he's at a wedding, and I've got to say it must be a very important wedding to him for him to uh, leave New Hampshire and head south to Florida because it doesn't happen very often. So it's me, Mark. And Brett. Brett sitting in. Now, Brett, you um, you host a podcast. That podcast is called School Sucks. Yes. Now, that's a pretty abrasive name. What's that mean to you? Uh, that's what I'm told. Yeah, very abrasive. Uh, and uh, I've gotten a lot of criticism for the abrasiveness of the name, but I also thought it was clever marketing considering the target audience I was trying to reach, which is millions of young, fresh-faced kids who already know that school sucks and school is you know, doing a lot of the PR for me on that. So, uh, but, you know, it has more of a, a literal meaning too, as far as I'm concerned. You know, I think that when we're these little kids, we're, you know, creative, imaginative, optimistic, and maybe, dare I say, individualistic in ways that, you know, I found most of the kids 
that I was working with, uh, 16, 17, 18 years old, they really didn't retain those, those qualities. You know, it's not like they were gone forever, but they were certainly suppressed by the school experience. So it sucked those things out of them. It also sucks a bunch of money out of the community, by the way. My son is six years old. Mm-hmm. There's nothing he wants more than to learn yeah. He wants to, you know, read, he wants to experience things. He he even loves the idea of school. Yeah. Um, you know, he wants to to be with the other kids and and do those those things. Um and somewhere along the line, I think it happens around middle school. Yeah. You don't you aren't as excited about getting to school in the morning and the busy work that they have you do isn't that great it's it's kind of piled up like these things pile up yeah it's, if you just had to do one boring thing where you re- wrote uh, you know one 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 thing over and over again in my school we had to do bible verses i know that this does you know this does not resonate with perhaps everybody but there's probably something where you had to do this rote writing yeah we'd, we'd have to write a particular Bible verse, whatever it was that we had to learn over and over. Sometimes it'd be five times, depending how long this thing was. Uh, sometimes it'd be five times. Sometimes it'd be 25 times. Yeah. And, you know, that's not a lot of fun. No, no, I, I can't see how it would be. It sounds very monotonous. And I certainly, even though we weren't writing Bible verses in school, uh, not that school doesn't teach its own kind of religion, there was a lot of repetition. Now, you could argue that repetition is a way to learn things. I mean, I think... I think repetition's a way to learn things, but um, I learned... Like, for instance, I can sing the lyrics to, um, you know, Men Without hat, Hats, uh, you, know, you Can Dance, or whatever it is. Um, and I can sing those lyrics. I haven't heard that song in probably five years, but I know it because I learned them because I wanted to learn it you know, many years ago. Why did you want to learn it? Because I liked it. You I was liked excited it about wanted, it. And you wanted to just yep. be able to sing it. It was 1984, and, um, you know, Men Without Hats was an awesome group you at know, the time. Th- that's true. I remember, because you're a little older than me, but yep. there was a time when, like, if the song wasn't on, you couldn't hear it. Yeah, that's true. So this, is, this is the radio. It served your interest to learn the lyrics, to be able to sing it to yourself when it wasn't available through the radio. Because mom wasn't going to take me to buy every cassette tape that I wanted. No, but I had that one. Yeah. Men Without Hats. The song was called The Safety Dance. The Safety Dance. That's what it was. Um, I couldn't, couldn't remember what it was, but apparently, but I can tell you some of the lyrics. So what, what your story has, has a certain component that a lot of these school stories don't have, and it's that it's your own intrinsic motivation, right? So repetition is okay. Like if somebody's learning to be a musician, right? They're motivated because they have a goal in mind. Uh, middle school, which you mentioned, is particularly difficult because I often describe it as like this, this time in our lives where there's, there doesn't seem like there's any light at the end of the tunnel. We're past the age where adults are just incredibly impressive because they can drive these cars and they can make us these meals and thank God for them. And also you're not cute any longer. In middle oh, school, yeah. In middle, you know, because I mean, my son's six. Uh, people mm-hmm. make over him all the time. Yeah. And that's his world. His yeah. world is that he has two adults that take care of him. Um, hopefully, hopefully, I'm having him take care of himself. But I, I, admittedly, I'd like him to be better at some of these things. So sometimes I'll I'll do the stuff for him. And but but he's you know he's going to hit an age, and I don't know if it's ten, I don't know if it's eleven, I don't know if it's twelve. When it's going to be like, hey, man up and do this stuff on your own. And yeah, that, that stinks. I yeah. mean, you know, it was it's really nice to have somebody make food for you clean up your messes or at least help you clean up your messes and is all is if he drops something on the floor all he has to do is kind of you know <laughs> move at it with his hands and I'll help him right and then I do it. you know I won't do it if he doesn't do anything but if he just kind of ah, moves around at it I'll, I'll I'll continue helping so life ain't sweet anymore when you're <laughs> you're 12 years old and no one's doing these things for you and you've right. also noticed that you've got some zits in this weird mustache coming in mm-hmm. Yeah, life starts to get hard, and it's compounded by the fact that you're filling out worksheets all day and attending gym class with kids who might be a little ahead of you at this whole puberty thing that you're just learning about, and it's uncomfortable. And yeah, I remember that being a really difficult time in life uh, for me, and it was it was very discouraging. So I don't now. I went to a private school and a public yeah. school. I yeah. started out in private, went to a public, and I didn't see a lot of difference except for sort of attention to the students. I was on the dean's list in eighth grade. Mm-hmm. Um, I went to private school in high school, though. So in ninth grade, that's what we that's what we call ninth grade. It was still high school at the time. Um, 
I, I was failing. I failed two classes. So I went from dean's list, which is, you know, the highest above honor roll at my school to failing a couple of classes because there just wasn't the teacher attention there. But the schools were relatively similar. They taught the same stuff. It was the same sort of uh, way of teaching and that kind of thing. And I, I don't want that for my son. I want a different form of uh, education for him. And that's what I've gone for. But there's this new thing being rolled out called Common Core. And I don't know much about it. But I've heard about it on Facebook. Uh, mostly people are uh, upset about the math. Yeah. Um, now, I, I've looked at the math in Common Core. I It's actually the way I do math in my head. Sure. But... Uh, they don't. What they've gotten rid of is sort of the old math where you stack the stuff on top of each other. You either do a, a addition or subtraction with it, and you draw a line, and then you come up with your answer underneath. That's gone away with, and they have a new system for sort of solving problems, which um, new systems tend to infuriate people. New bad systems really infuriate people. Yeah. And so this system is either good or bad in your estimation. And, uh, you know, I... I think that it's a. I think we do need new, new math for a new world. Um, what I was told when I was in school is I was lied to. The math teachers said, "Well, it's not like you're going to walk around with a calculator in your pocket." And sure enough, <laughs> I've got a cell phone and it's got a calculator on it. So right. you know, um, Mrs. Schmidt was was mistaken. Right. And, absolutely. Um, yeah, they were all uh, Dutch and German names uh, at the uh, Dutch Reform School I went to. Mistaken. Um, you know, Mr. Ms. Ms. Van Der B had it wrong. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I mean, they couldn't see these things at the time. At the time, you didn't carry around a calculator in your pocket. They were pretty valuable things. And that exemplifies the whole school experience, though, is that it's always behind the times in that way because it's so it's so bureaucratic they're teaching to the past it, absolutely you wonder about these computer classes that they send kids to in college i mean you know they're not learning whatever's happening now on the internet they're learning about something that's old enough that they actually were managed to put it into a textbook yeah we used to get in trouble i remember in college it was it was very much like a high school class because we were scolded frequently uh for using the instant message Feature Now, I was in college in the 90s, so this was a long time ago. And I think like AOL Instant Messenger was new. And we were learning uh, about Windows 95. Uh -huh. But in the class, we were getting in trouble because we had set up our own social network. Yeah. <laughs> just, that's not important. Windows up. 95, <laughs> eyes up here, you know. No, so tell me about this Common Core because there was a, sure. there's a news story we're going to talk about. about yeah, that. I mean, first of all, I would say that it's nothing new. It's uh, it's sort of a recycled or just kind of repackaged version of No Child Left Behind in in its principles. But even No Child Left Behind was not new, um, and both relate to something that started to appear and be discussed in the early 1990s called outcomes based education. Outcomes are good. Yeah, outcomes. Yeah, sounds education. I've heard nothing but good things about that. <laughs> Where could it go wrong? I'm kind of interested. Are you interested in outcomes-based education? Do you know something about this Common Core? Our number is 855-450-3733. That's 855-450-3733. Free Talk Live. Remember how bad your allergies were last year? <laughs> When they hit again, be prepared with new Nasacort Allergy 24-Hour, the first full-strength 24-hour prescription nasal spray available without a prescription. Unlike antihistamines, it blocks more of the body's chemical responses that cause nasal allergy symptoms, relieving the worst of them, including congestion, for 24 hours. New Nasacort Allergy 24-Hour stops more of what makes you miserable. Use as directed may take up to one week of daily use to feel the most symptom relief. People are waking up. People are saying no to GMO, gluten, toxins, and sugars. The masses are moving to holistic, natural, and organic foods and supplements. Life Change Tea is a non-GMO, gluten-free product that helps your body overcome sickness and obesity. You need to order to experience the change. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Or call us at 928-308-0408. Again, 928-308-0408. You need to order to experience your health change. GetTheTea.com. 
Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realist, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. My name is Angel Rach. I'm a mother of two teenage children, and I fought all the way to the Supreme Court for the right to use the medicine that saved my life. I've been permanently disabled for 10 years with an inoperable brain tumor, wasting syndrome, and several other serious conditions. For four years, I was in a wheelchair in so much pain, I couldn't even hug my kids. The hardest part was looking in their eyes and seeing how much they were suffering because of my medical condition. The medicine that gave me my life back and gave my kids their mom back was cannabis, also known as medical marijuana. With medical marijuana, I can walk, maintain my weight, and I can be a mom. Without it, my doctors believe that I would die. To learn more about medical marijuana, contact Marijuana Policy Project at 1-877-JOIN-MPP or on the web at mpp.org. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. We can dance if we want to. We can leave your friends behind. There it is. The anthem from the 80s. Yeah, I remember this song when I was in high school. It was, uh, or, but no, no, middle school. I think it was middle school. Yeah. Um, it was a big deal. So anyway, um, yeah, I had him play it on the way in because normally it's uh, long-haired devil music that uh, Ian has. As the, you had that set up that fast? That's impressive. I, I'm a radio professional, and I've got people people that work with me that are radio professionals. It's, uh, it's, Nicely it's awesome to, to have a, a good crew with you. So anyway, we um, eight fifty five four fifty free. It is Mark with you and Brett, and uh, the, the these uh, phone lines are brought to you by Pro XPN. And uh, I want to tell you real quick about the Free State Project. You and I uh, moved up here for the Free State Project. It yep. is a project to move twenty thousand liberty loving individuals to one state. That state has been chosen, and that state is New Hampshire. The idea is is what happens when you get twenty thousand people that believe similar stuff not the same by any stretch but similar things uh, i believe that the uh, the 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 what you pledge to when you move to the free state project is to uh, put your maximum practical effort towards the creation of a society where the uh, the maximum role of government is the protection of life liberty and property mm-hmm. and what would happen if you got people that cared about that kind of uh, world all in one place and what we're tr- 
finding out is is that all kinds of things are happening. Some work within politics, some work within media, some are doing all all different kinds of things uh, outside the system activism. If you want to find out more about it, you can go to freestateproject.org. If you want to come out and hang out at an awesome Liberty Festival with probably close to 2,000 people at it this year, it's the Porcupine Freedom Festival. You can go to P-O-R-C. F-E-S-T.com. That's porkfest.com. And it's well worth it, and I think you'll enjoy it. Porkfest.com. So, we were, uh, Brett, we were talking about Common Core, and I don't think so. It's this boogeyman that's been trotted out. Yeah, a, lo- a lot of uh, conservative ire because it's being pushed by the Obama administration. Did so. the conservatives have a problem with No Child Left Behind? Because I can tell you the liberals certainly seem to have a problem with it, right? Yeah, they did. And and yeah, it certainly had George Bush's fingerprints on it, I would say. But it was, you know, co-authored by Democrats like Ted Kennedy. So I don't know. I mean, it, like when you see that, like it's the brainchild of, the you know, George Bush and, Bush Ted, and Ted Kennedy. Kennedy. People like us should be very concerned. Um, But no, I don't remember uh, as much of an outcry about No Child Left Behind. But Oh, I remember an awful uh, caterwauling about it. But uh, Mostly from the left. Yeah. Yeah, not not from the conservative side. And I think there's been a lot of, uh, shall we say, libertarian criticism about the federalization of education you know well, that's con- but that that's been for decades that's been for decades i mean that that's been going all the way back to the 1950s and i think one of the important uh pieces of context to have about common core like i said before it's nothing new and it seems like they are frequently or about every decade i guess it works out to they're repackaging this centralization of control even though most of the money for education comes from the local level through property tax a disproportionate amount of control is held by the federal government. So they they hand they they hang out a carrot mm-hmm. and they put a whole bunch of strings on on the carrot. If you take the carrot, then you have to take the strings. There's hooks in the carrot. The strings turn out to be chains. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. Um, so there's a small amount of a budget, maybe five percent, three percent, something like that of a of a school budget comes from federal money, but there's all these requirements and. The what local what governments have never been able to do, whether it's even when it's federal government, you know, national governments around the world. When the United States has all gives all kinds of aid, they call it aid. It's not aid. It's uh, it's money that has uh, strings attached, given to other countries, and there's a variety of it. It's states. It's on a municipal level, and it, it does it all the time. This is the trick. Yeah, we'll sure. give you some money, and then we tell you what to do. Because it's enough It's enough money that you can't say no, but it's not enough money that you can actually be free to do what you want. So it's it's really tough. Yeah, and one of the criticisms, another one of the criticisms of Common Core is that it was particularly devious because a lot of the states had the money dangled in front of them before they knew what Common Core was. But they don't... It, but <laughs> And it doesn't... You're right, it didn't even matter to them. They It wouldn't matter, and they don't... Uh, they fall for this crap all the time. Now, I'm going to lay it right out there, what I think the moral... Uh, the solution to this all already is. I don't know what the problem is with Common Core, but I know what the solution is. Okay. The solution is to get the federal government, the state government, the local government out of education because governments aren't businesses. They don't work that way. They're not incentivized the way a business is. I went to a private school. That private school is a business. Even if it's a not-for-profit business, it's a, it's a business, and they serve people. Yeah. The problem is, is that we have big institutions. My high school was fifteen hundred kids. Yeah. I ha- I was in a class of eight hundred, ki- uh, excuse me, of uh, fifty kids in a school of five hundred um, in, in private school. So I had there were fifty eighth graders. That's yeah. all. And uh, the uh, you know I mean the the difference is is that you don't get the the personalization. You don't get the customization. And kids fall through the cracks. I'm a perfect example. I went from a private school in eighth grade. And to a public school in ninth grade, I went from dean's list to failing a couple of classes. Yeah. It's, you know, the, the public school system didn't have what it took to actually educate me. Some kids can do really well in there, and that's really great. But you have to ask yourself, who are these kids, and could their parents afford to send them if they weren't being taxed to death on their property taxes? You can see anywhere from 50 to 70 percent, sometimes 80 percent 
of property taxes go to pay for schools. Well, there's another thing, too. You say kids can do well in public school, and a lot of kids do well in public school. And I threw up some air quotes there with my fingers because— well, we heard them. <laughs> because, um, well, you know, I think it's an important question to ask, what does that mean? What are the consequences of doing well? One of the things that school teaches so well is how to do school. And maybe, yeah, that translates into being a good, compliant, you know, taxpaying citizen. Uh, but I think there's a lot of sacrifice involved in that as well. So... Even the kids who are doing really well in school, there's consequences for them as well. I mean, obviously, the consequences might be more palpable for the juvenile delinquent or the kid who's labeled as learning disabled. Uh, but I really have a hard time believing that this is good. This kind of institutionalization is good for anybody. It seems to me, um, and one thing we know is there's statistics that say that uh, the kids that graduate public school, 20% of them are functionally illiterate. Mm -hmm. And in some neighborhoods, this is as high as 40%. Now, I don't, I think you could get rid of public school and the worst thing that would happen is that as many kids, um, you know, would, would hit their 18th birthday functionally illiterate as they do now. We can't, you can't fail much more than 20% being functionally illiterate. Really? Right, right. I mean, I don't think you can get much worse than that. So at this point, all we have is this incredibly expensive apparatus. What And what it appears to be doing in many, in many ways is uh, dumbing kids down and, and making it so that they don't know how to critically think and ask questions. Absolutely. And there's plenty of evidence for that in the adult world. So tell me the story about this uh, this young lady. Um, we're going to be talking about this in the, the next segment. Um, what happened... Briefly, what, what teases? Uh, the title is Treated Like a Criminal, Girl 13 Says She Was Suspended for Opposing Common Core. Common Core seems to be a big buzzword these days. Have you experienced Common Core in your school? 855-453-733. Free Talk Live. Don't complain about your cable bill going up and up and up. Do something about it. Grab a pencil and jot down this special number. 1-855-905-MY-TV. The more cable TV rates go up, the better digital satellite TV looks. Say goodbye to the cable guy. And get more of your favorite channels in 100% digital quality for less money. Call 1-855-905-MY-TV. Sign up for packages starting as low as $19.99 and there's no equipment to buy. You get free HD TV upgrade, a free DVR upgrade, and free professional and installation you control what you watch when you watch it record your favorite shows pause and rewind live tv even skip the commercials watch local channels too at just 19.99 what are you waiting for pull out your major credit or debit card call 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV say goodbye to the cable guy cut costs and get more 1-855-905-MY-TV 1-855-905-MY-TV since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. 
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. Immigrating to the Shire was easy. I was instantly plugged into a community of individuals who also care about peace, liberty, and justice and are willing to do something about it. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Free Talk Live. 855-453. You can give us a call, talk about whatever it is that you want to talk about here on the live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live. We've been talking about Common Core. It's this this boogeyman, this specter that has reared its its government bureaucratic its bureaucratic head um, in in our schools, I guess. And I I think a lot of people have heard about it. Mm-hmm. Few people like it. Right. And fewer still know what the hell it is. Yeah, it has it has a lot of opponents coming from both directions, interestingly now. The Obama loyalists are still uh, supporting it. But yeah, uh, there's a lot of momentum against it, for sure. Yeah, I think it's interesting if how people tend to support government programs based almost entirely on their team. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, they're the, they're the good guys, so they, whatever they must be doing must be a good thing. And... Over time, I think fewer and fewer people are believing that the Republicans and the Democrats are the good guys. Like they're having a difficult time with that. Um, at this point, mostly what you hear is, well, they're better than the the really bad guys on the other team. Yeah. And that's a sad, sad state of affairs, I've got to say. You can get a free pound of coffee by going to coffee.com freetalklive.com. Now, that is not a sad state of affairs, a free pound of coffee. And this is not just any old coffee, because you can go to the store and get coffee. It's not worth uh, going to coffee.freetalklive.com for a you know free pound of store-bought coffee. But if that coffee was 100% organic, shade-grown, top 1% grade Arabica coffee, yeah, that's going to be some really good coffee. Now, Buzzbox, that's the name of the brand of this, uh, this coffee, it is competitively priced with other coffees. We get a, we we've joined up with them, and the reason we've joined up with them is because not only do they have great coffee, but they help people around the world with microloans. They take their profits and you know the profits of partners like Free Talk Live, dump it into microloans for people in third world countries. They not just they don't just work with co-op farmers who join their co-op and they give loans to them to join their co-op so that they can uh, have a better life through growing coffee. But they also work with other um, World Vision, uh, other organizations to give uh, microloans to people for a variety of reasons, for whatever they might want to start. And I think that this is the way to help people. You give them a hand up instead of a handout. When they know what they want to do and they want to take out a loan that they intend to repay at a very low rate, um, then you can really help them with their dream because people are only going to achieve where they have dreams. They're not going to achieve when, you know, if somebody says, okay, you're going to be a carpenter. Well, you're not, if you're not passionate about working with wood, it's not going to be that great for you. So you can help people around the world 
And start out by getting a free pound of coffee by going to coffee.freetalklive.com. You sign up for a subscription program there. You can cancel any time. Try it out. See how you like the coffee. See if you like what they do. It's coffee. It's, it's really a no-brainer. A free pound of delicious coffee. Coffee.freetalklive.com. You ever met one of these people who say, I don't drink coffee? I've met, I've married one. <laughs> oh, well, I don't mean, I don't want to make fun of them. I'm just saying that uh, try cold brewing. Cold brewing. Okay. You heard about this? You, no, you I just, know nothing of you it. You put coffee in water, you put it in the fridge, you can buy a canister for doing this, and uh, you leave it in the fridge overnight, you heat it up in the morning in a pan, because I was getting a lot of, uh, you know, like, uh, the acidity of coffee is, yeah. is troubling for some people. And by the way, shade grown cuts down on that. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So I started to cold brew the coffee, and a lot of those problems went away, like, overnight. Like, I would burp. All day mm -hmm. and feel like uh, kind of gassy. Sorry, everyone, but uh, cold brewing fixed that for me. So, you know, think about a cold brewer. There you go. And enjoy delicious coffee. So we were talking in the last segment about uh, this story yeah. where this young gal has been uh, disciplined at school for protesting against Common Core. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Tell me the story. Yeah. All right. So this is from the... Times Herald Record, which is a paper out of New York, and the title again, Treated Like a Criminal, Girl, 13 Years Old, Says She Was Suspended for Opposing Common Core. This is in Sparrowbush. A 13-year-old student at Orange Ulster Boses. This sounds like, it doesn't even sound like it's in, where is this? Uh, this is in New York. Now, okay. that's that's a term that a lot of us might be unfamiliar with there, the proper am. noun, Orange Ulster Boses. It sounds like it's in England. Okay. Orange and Ulster, I believe, are two counties in New York, and Boses is an acronym. Okay. And it stands for um, Board of Cooperative Educational Services. This is something that's exclusive to New York. All right. And what it is is basically if they identify that districts have similar needs, Boses is sort of this layer. I don't Maybe it's unfair to call it a layer of bureaucracy, but it allows different school districts to combine resources and Sounds uh, like it. lessons and maybe some information, uh, that kind of thing. But that's what it's, it's BOCES not like, means. It's not like government agencies have never been able to work together and become more efficient than they were in the past. It's just rare. <laughs> it is. Really rare. And in um, if, if you were in a, a free market where educational systems had to compete against other educational systems to provide us with the best educational system that we could get, then the inefficient ones, rather than being having more money dumped into them, would in fact, uh, you know, just they just go away. They'd be like the mimeograph machine when the photocopier came around. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So the girl says she was suspended from school this week. As a result of telling other students they didn't have to take the Common Core English test Tuesday, the girl, eighth grader, Sierra Oliviero, was suspended for two days for insubordination. While she acknowledges the charge, she contends in a complaint filed with the district that she felt bullied by three administrators because she told other students they didn't have to take the test. Her mother, Karen, uh, ooh, I'm going to really have to guess on this last name here. Buchesny of Sparrowbush said Thursday that she felt her daughter had done what students are told to do when they're being bullied. Quote, she walked away. She felt like she was being treated like a criminal. She's a 13-year-old girl. What would you do? You can't be bullied by the government because that's just not possible. The government is in charge. How can they be a bully? Wait, none of this makes any sense that I'm saying. Uh, I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Of course, that's what the government does. You're not allowed to call it bullying, but everything the government does comes with the threat. It comes with, an, uh, with a threat. You can call it, a, there's lots of words you can use, right? Like you can call it being disciplined. You can call it being regulated, but you can't call it what it is. Right, and, and that's ultimately... It all comes down to one of two things. It's and mostly it just comes down to death. But you know they'll they'll th really that's what it is. Um, I mean you know if they say, say they threaten to take, kick you out of your house because you refuse to pay property taxes because they have you know some they they do Common Core in their schools. Mm -hmm. Well if you're if you know they'll just say well we sold your house to someone else and now we have to send the sheriffs to, for, to make you leave. If you don't leave, the sheriffs are going to bring in their armored truck. 
If you, you know, use your God-given right to have a weapon to defend yourself, you can believe they're going to shoot your house up. There's, um, you know, there's many instances, myriad of instances where they, you know, they've burned the houses down of people like this. Ultimately, if you don't comply, they have to kill you. Eventually, sure. They have to. I mean, if, if, you, if you're going to get a speeding ticket, they turn on the blue lights. You know what the blue lights are? They're a warning that these guys in the car were going to shoot out your tires and perhaps kill you. Yeah. I mean, that's ultimately what it is um, when it when when you look at these things. Yes, if you obey the warning, you won't get any of these things. But if you pretend like you're a free, sovereign individual who has the right to rule yourself, you're going to die because they can't have a person running around like that. Yeah, but they you have to give them credit, Mark. They've gotten a lot more clever about how they've done this. These types of people, because this is a personality type that has existed for thousands of years. Yeah. And back in the old it days. It always existed. You know, a, maybe a guy would pick up a rock. Yep. And he would say, I'll have your wife, I'll have your, uh, your buffalo, yep. or I'll just smash your head with this rock. And uh, there's more to that, so we can we can pick that up, because there's a whole lineage of <laughs> the evolution of these types of threats. And they do become more sophisticated, and then we'll get back to the story. 855-453. You're not going to hear this on other talk radio shows. 855-453-733. Free Talk Live. Everybody wants to know. What can you buy with bitcoins? Isn't there like a Bitcoin general store or something? Well, yes, now there is, and it's at bitcoingeneralstore.com. Bitbrew and the Bees Brothers have teamed up to create a place where U.S. customers in the lower 48 can shop for, well, anything with free shipping. What can you find at bitcoingeneralstore.com? Bitcoin apparel, stickers, gifts, precious metals, physical bitcoins, coffee and honey, of course, and electronics and computer accessories. The folks at Bitcoin General Store are true Bitcoin believers who don't even use third-party payment processors. They get their inventory direct with Bitcoin and pass on the savings to you. Shop at BitcoinGeneralStore.com with confidence that you are supporting a real Bitcoin economy. you got to see what they have to offer. Visit BitcoinGeneralStore.com today. That's BitcoinGeneralStore.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for under $30,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet under $30,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for 129000 You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Take delivery in spring. 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring signs into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. Who hey. 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 do you think Excuse you Excuse me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make it. Wait a minute. Now. Wait a minute. Oh, hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Un because you're scared of property. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at victimlesscrimespree.com. 
So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Lil Drums. Every bit as fun as a full-size Nestle drumstick cone and definitely cuter. Visit us at drumstick.com. Vacations are all about family time, but you don't have to leave home to have fun. Take one weekend a month and devote it to family activities. Pull out the board games and puzzles, serve up some treats, or have a picnic. Even without leaving home, you'll feel like you've really had some time away. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. You can give us a call, talk about whatever is on your mind. That's 855-450-3733. It's Mark with you. And Brett. Now, as I had said previously, um, Ian, our normal... Saturday night host is away in Florida. So, you know, it's it's me and, and Brett. And uh, Brett, you normally do the Wednesday show with us? Yes. And what you are as an expert in the area of, uh, of education, you've uh, been a teacher and uh, you tutoring and then now you do on your, your own and you do a, a podcast on um, education. And we've been talking about this common, there's a news story on about Common Core and we've been talking about Common Core and I'm uh, sort of more interested in what this is. But real quick, I want to tell people, uh, you probably heard a lot about getting gold and silver. Um, some people want to get it as a an investment. Some people want it as a um, as a hedge against inflation. Some people want it as a barter currency in case uh, you know things go really south here. I don't know if uh, the power grid goes down or something like that. Um, I I've been investing with uh, in gold and silver, buying gold and silver from Midas Resources for many years, and I I trust them. We've teamed up with them. And you can get your get gold, help Free Talk Live in the process by going to gold.freetalklive.com. They've got all kinds of coins and pieces there. They'll be able to help you with whatever you need. And it's nice to be able to see the prices online because that way you can do some comparison shopping. Gold.freetalklive.com. And uh, before we went to uh, the end of the last segment, we were talking about this, this concept that you brought up uh, of government. And like, hey, you know, I could just murder you. In the end, it's going to be a murder if you don't do what you want. The only crime is disobedience, right? Yeah, and I started thinking there's been this very interesting story arc to the justifications for the state over the course of the last couple, maybe three, four millennia. And sure, yeah, it started with, I could just murder you. I could just smash your head in with a rock and take your stuff. But then it, it it's it's interesting. It started to become more sophisticated than that. Like after that, somebody said, well, see, here's the thing. I'm kind of a ma- magical god <laughs> kind of guy. So. Yeah, right. Like uh, <laughs> God sent me down or the gods sent me down to rule over you. We're better than you. I'm going to build my chair up higher than you to prove it. And uh, that's that was the thing. And the encouraging thing is that all along the way, you know, this justification for power and control was being checked by um, curiosity and, and reason, it seems, like, oh, okay, I'm not a god, uh, but I do his bidding. Okay, I don't do God's bidding. Well, I, uh, do, I do the people's bidding. That's what it is. I'm actually I'm... here for the people. <laughs> and then it was like, okay, well, maybe not so much, but there's people in caves and they're trying to murder you and the earth is going to flood. So then it was fear. And now it's kind of devolved back to, you know, Obama with his kill list and... Uh, yeah, I could just murder you. So it's it's interesting to see that arc. Ultimately, you know, interestingly, I saw the Captain America movie yeah. last night. I'm a huge fan of Captain America. Love him. And just the concept, uh, you know, how he fights for truth and justice, not for a nation. And 
the commentary in there was clearly aimed at Obama's kill list. They had these, uh, you know, drones in the sky, these big uh, fortresses in the sky that were going to be able to shoot a million different dissidents all in an instant if they could get them online. They didn't quite, well, I'm not going to go any further than that. Um, but it seems pretty obvious they didn't kill a million people, right? So um, it's, it's, it was a you know, poignant piece. I want to go to the phones. We got uh, Dave calling in on KGOE. Dave, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Well, guys, uh, my main topic has been troubling me for a long time. I love Free Talk Live, but I think there are those people, particularly in our Patriot Act, our tech goon types, that don't particularly like free talk or free speech. I agree they with you. Do in, they do invade our computers. They do invade our phones. Not because they think we're criminals selling nuclear secrets to the Chinese Navy or something, but because they think we're the kind of person that exposes their corruption, their fraud, and they don't like that, they get all over you. And that's a reality that I think we have to take a serious look at. Yeah, you know, I, it's, it's really difficult for the average person. Uh, encryption is an option. Yeah, there are some uh, email programs that you can use, um, or things that you can pay for, that are supposed to, uh, you know, help you with this. Google's even talked about some level of encryption, but I, I don't. They're so big, I can I can barely trust them because ultimately they sort of have to do the government's bidding. You know? Yeah, well, a lot of totally these countries own, do. They Go. totally own Yahoo and several of the other large email systems, free email and. The same people, if they can do that, then I have to wonder, what can they do with a voting machine, which is just a simple, basic computer? They have modems. How easily invaded are they? How is much of the electronic voting equipment, their vote counting equipment, the what, same what, people? That what elections are you worried about? Are you talking about like a presidential election? Presidential, congressional, city council, board of supervisors, state senators, assemblymen, wherever mm, sure. elections are done on electronic machines, I am worried about them. You know, I don't disagree with you. I, I'm, I'm concerned about these things, but I tend to think that uh, on a local level, people are trying hard. I know in my town, um, I, I know the guy who's the supervisor of elections, and I'm certain that Bruce isn't going to let somebody, uh, you know, lie about the results. And the results in my town don't tend to be much different than any other town. Now, we have paper ballots. We don't have electronic. Um, so, I mean, I, I know what the results are, and I know the results. Uh, I know people who watch Bruce, um, you know, do this. There's not that many um, votes. And I really get the impression that, you know, the numbers in my town are very similar to the rest of the nation's results. I don't think that they're getting um, messed with too much. I think it really comes from sort of the control um, on a much higher level, sort of through the media um, of people. And I don't I don't think that the NSA has to go that far, uh, Dave. I think that what they have to do is all they have to do is um, control a few politicians, because you know, usually bills don't pass by much, and if you know their dirty secrets, you can get them on the important bills to you know whoever you are. You can get them to vote the way you want. At that point, they're in your pocket. It's done. And I believe. Go ahead. Go ahead, Dave. I believe polls polls can be rigged. I do believe that there are small precincts with 200, 250 registered voters that are delivered five, six, seven thousand votes one way or the other, and that people say. Wow, that has to demand a recount. That can't be. Two hundred and fifty people can't cast six, seven thousand votes. Yes, to And they say, recount what? There's nothing to be recounted on these electronic machines. It was just going to reproduce exactly what's in there. So have faith. Well, I'm not going to have faith that two hundred voters deliver six thousand votes. What do you? And it happens. How, how would you? I, I, you know, they've they've shown that these machines can be hacked. I'm not saying that they can't yeah. be, and I tend to share this. What do, what do you think the uh, the answer is to this? Number two pencils and pieces of paper? I really believe that we have an obligation as American citizens to take these voting machines down to the bay and drop them in like they did the Tea Party, because 
they are a total rip-off fraud, and people are t- turning their back and looking the other way. Yes, I think verifiable paper, stone, wood, whatever, that we can say this is the way the person voted, and we can recount it as often as we need to to verify it. Yes, I think we need, we need something other than uh, an electronic machine with a modem that they can invade and flip as many votes as they feel they need to flip to produce. We almost invariably come down to having to choose between the two lesser of the two evils. Oh, yeah. It's, it know? seems like the, the crappiest candidate uh, always seems to be the one that uh, I get get forced to pick from. I'm, a, um, I, I'm an elected Republican, and on a national level, I don't even vote. Yeah. I don't. I don't even vote for Republicans outside of New Hampshire because I just I find it so distasteful. Well, that kind of leads into the question that I have too for for you, David. I mean, the most controversial election in my lifetime was the 2000 presidential election. Now, I would say that by the time they narrow it down to those two guys, it doesn't matter who wins. But uh, this controversy in the year in the year 2000 uh, over the Diebold voting machines that a lot of people on the left believe granted the election unfairly to George W. Bush over Al Gore. You know, I don't really understand what the difference between John McCain, Barack Obama, Barack Obama, Mitt Romney, those kinds of once it gets down to two people like that, it doesn't really matter who wins to me. Dave, so thank, thank you, so, you for being there, my friend. Thank I, you so much. You know, I. I think uh, one thing we can see about Al Gore is he still believes in something. It doesn't seem like that with George Bush to me. 855 450 free, free talk live. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Meowbit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. Meowbit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of name coin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, Meowbit. Go to meowbit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T dot com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, April 5th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.96 per ounce. Gold is worth $1,303 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $453. Antiwar.com reports, U.S. District Judge Rosemary Collier has dismissed Nasser al-Alwaki's lawsuit against Obama administration officials over the assassination of his son and grandson in U.S. drone strikes in Yemen. 
Collier argued it was impermissible for the courts to get involved in operational combat decisions regarding the designation of targets, though the U.S. is not involved in combat in Yemen, where the killings took place, and the assassinations were rather planned months in advance and publicized before they took place. Collier went on to insist that the Constitution grants sole decision-making to the president on who lives and dies, and that allowing lawsuits would hinder their ability in the future to act decisively and without hesitation. Collier's ruling was materially identical to the Justice Department's own demand for dismissal, which insisted courts have no say over the president's ability to kill people abroad, citizens or not, and that it was essentially impossible for anyone to challenge the killings before they happen or after. When you purchase gold or silver from Amagi Metals using my affiliate link, gold.fppradio.com, you help fund FPP Radio News. That's gold.fppradio.com. Reuters reports President Obama's plan for overhauling the NSA's phone surveillance program could force carriers to collect and store customer data that they are now not legally obliged to keep, according to U.S. officials. One complication arises from the popularity of flat rate or unlimited calling plans, which are used by the vast majority of Americans. While the FCC requires phone companies to retain for 18 months records on toll or long-distance calls, the rule's application is vague for subscribers of unlimited plans because they do not get billed for individual calls. That could change if the Obama administration pushes through with a proposal to require carriers instead of the NSA to collect and store phone metadata, which includes dialed numbers and call length, but not the content of conversations. Under the administration's proposal, the phone companies would be required to turn over the data to the NSA in response to a court-approved government request. U.S. officials said the carriers might be forced to create new mechanisms to ensure that metadata from flat-rate subscribers could be monitored. They said these issues will require further discussion between the White House, Congress, and the phone industry. One industry source familiar with data storage policies said these are very complex systems, adding, I doubt there are companies out there that have a nice, neat, single database that can tell you how long records are kept universally. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Coinbase. Coinbase is a simple and secure online Bitcoin wallet for sending, receiving, and storing Bitcoin. Get started at coinbase.fppradio.com. That's coinbase.fppradio.com. WorldNet Daily has new revelations about the mother who was killed by Capitol Police in October. First, they called her a terrorist. When she turned out to be an unarmed suburban mother, they said she was on drugs. Now, WorldNet Daily has exclusively learned, without a trace of doubt, that was wrong too. WND can also report Miriam Carey was shot in the back of the head by U.S. Capitol Police officers and uniformed Secret Service agents six months ago on October 3rd, 2013. The official police investigation still has not been released, but Carey family attorney Eric Sanders obtained the toxicology and autopsy report on this macabre anniversary. The report showed there were no drugs in Carrie's system, prescription or otherwise, when she was shot dead. The report was prepared by Dr. Nikki Mortzini of the Office of the Chief Medical Examiner for the District of Columbia. The report also said that Carrie was shot numerous times, but did not specify exactly how many. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. North, an extremely vocal opponent of gay marriage, drew fire during his 2010 re-election campaign for saying that the legalization of gay marriage would lead to man-horse marriages. In one instance, he told the New Haven Register, quote, it's a slippery slope. If we allow two men to marry, what's next? Men marrying horses? But yesterday, North found himself at the center of a media firestorm when the New York Times published photos of North on what appears to be romantic outings with a horse. Gathered during the Times' two-month investigation, the pictures show North in almost a dozen locations with the same three-year-old mare. A former aide discovered links to numerous horse-related sites, including phillyfreaks.com and hothindquarters.com on North's work computer. 
The Times is accusing North of using federal funds to pay for luxurious trips, including a three-night stay at the high-end Sueño Stables in Catalonia, Spain last month. North released a statement yesterday claiming he only spent time with the horse twice while conducting research for his anti-gay marriage project. This is the Onion News Network. Four fifty-three. That's three seven three three. For those of you who don't have little letters on your phone, that's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Or you can call in on Skype. Uh, we're LRN FM on Skype, and uh, you know if you haven't if you haven't called us before, you just send a uh, contact request, and we'll approve it during the show, and then you can call in. And the sound quality is often quite quite good. Um, so LRN FM, that's as in Liberty Radio Network. Oftentimes, N can sound like M on the radio. Dot frequency modulation. Yep, frequency modulation, or whatever you might think FM stands for. Isn't that what it stands for? That's what it stands for. Yes. 855 450 free, free talk live. Brought to you by uh, Pro XPN. So, we were talking about this story about this uh, young lady who um, had a situation in her school where uh, she, you know, Common Core was being implemented and she told her classmates that they didn't have to take the test and she got suspended for it. Yes, the charge was insubordination. And uh, we're going to pick it up where the superintendent weighs in. William Hecht, Orange Ulster BOCE superintendent, said the girl's complaint, which was filed under the state's Dignity for All Students Act, was being taken seriously. He said it was against school policy to discipline students for opting out of the controversial test and that Sierra's suspension came as the result of her refusing to obey the administrators. He declined any further comment on the matter. In her complaint, Sierra says that on Tuesday morning, the day of the test, she told a student he didn't have to take the test if he didn't want to. And the teacher told her, um, to, and this is her uh, describing it, shut my mouth and keep walking. She later told other friends that they weren't required to take the test, telling one that the test, this is a quote, the test is set up for the kids to fail. I don't know what that means. Isn't that interesting? Well, I have a lot of ideas about what it might mean. And that could launch us into a whole deeper Common Core discussion. I want to hear minute. about them, but let's go to uh, Jacob uh, real quick. Uh, Jacob, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Yes, well, I was on the Drudge Report, and I read the, the news story about the um, two ambassadors, um, I guess the Russian ambassadors. Uh, did you see that news story on Drudge talking about the next countries that are going to invade? No, I haven't heard anything about this. Russia's going to invade a new country? Well, it was on Drudge. There was, they intercepted uh, some two Russian ambassadors talking about the next country they wanted to go after. And I wasn't sure if that was a new spoof or was it real or what, but it was... I think they were talking about going to Romania and Bulgaria. I thought the biggest what, what I've heard is is that, um, in fact, Russia's trying to basically negotiate, um, put, put, put a negotiation position out there so that they can make their Crimea uh, situation, whatever you call this thing that happened in Crimea, um, I mean, it looks like an invasion to me, um, so they can make it look like it's um, okay, I guess is what the idea is. So, so, well, we're not invading these other places. Well, yeah, yeah, that's what it sounded like. But I was concerned about the story because I said about Miami land and uh, what was the other one? Something about California they wanted to go after. It was on Drudge. I don't know if you read it or not. But no. I, I just kind of scary, you know, to me what the Russia has plans for the future, you know? I don't think Russia – somebody's out of their mind if they think they're going to get something like California and Miami. Um, they're going to – they're going to um, – you know, use force to head in there seems pretty unlikely to me. Well, they talked about getting a referendum, like they could vote, and I was on Drudge.com, and they said they could vote for a referendum for Miami, and they would have enough citizens down in Miami, they could just annex Miami. This is two ambassadors, supposedly. Drudge says it was posted on YouTube, and it was on Drudge support, so... Well, that'd be kind of interesting. If, if, if 66% of people in Dade County 
voted, that's where Miami is, uh, voted to secede and join the Soviet Union, or Russia, would you think that that was valid? Uh, I don't know if it would be. Uh, I don't know how that would work. It's, uh, well, why not? I mean, it's democracy, right? I mean, yeah, 66% but... of the people vote for it. It must be good, right, just, pure, and awesome. What does valid right. mean? I mean, democrat by the rules of a Does democratic system. The valid? fact is, I don't care if ninety nine percent of the people vote for something. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't make it right and good for me. Um, it's just tyranny. It may be tyranny. You can have tyranny of one person, like a you know a dictator. You can have tyranny of the majority. Major, you know, democracy isn't in and of itself just because you can get more people to believe something. And oftentimes it's people who are completely ignorant of the situation. If uh, American elections um, that I've seen over time, sure. any indication. Yeah. I, you know, I don't I don't think that uh, I don't think that anybody who takes an office in this country is, in fact, legitimate. So anyway, what do you Jacob, think about that, Jacob? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was going to mention one last thing was uh I was on the, the Rush Limbaugh fan website checking out the news story about the DCF, that family. It took that, the family away from the parents because um, the, the doctor was treating her, and they just stepped in. And they can't. Her parents can't visit her, her, her daughter, and the doctors can't treat her, and uh, they just completely took control of that little kid. For what uh, reason? What was their justification for doing it? Um, apparently, their justification was they didn't like their, their doctors. Who the who's they? Uh, who who is the they in this case? Uh, the, the Massachusetts okay. the, um, Department of Chance of Family Families, and she was getting treated with a doctor up in uh, her family doctor, and doctor uh, 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 diagnosed her with a condition. I forget the name of it was, but it was muscle pain or something like that. And they just blocked out the whole family, and they can't see her but once one one hour a week, um, and not letting her see her doctor. That's yeah, I can't. It's, just, it, it's really you know, scary it's, the idea that uh, of kids. I mean, see, the, there's these outlying stories of parents who treat their children hor- horribly, horribly, and there's no doubt about it. Oftentimes, we don't find out about it until you know years after, months after, if we ever find out about it, which goes to show that the uh, child protective Sur- services uh, mechanism is all messed up. <laughs> but so many times, kids get taken away from parents, and you're like. I, I don't know what I would do if they took my child away from me. I've got one thing in this life that's important to me above all other things. And this is, I believe, how every parent feels. I'm just assuming that they feel like I do. And that's, I, I mean, I can't even imagine what I would do if they just decided, yep, we're going to take your child away from you. I would flip out. Yeah, it's pretty, that's not the most invasive thing you could do, especially cutting out that doctor. I mean, that their doctor was, was treating that, that girl, and now she's pretty much can't get up. She used to, the story on the Rush Limbaugh went, family site said that they, she was ice skating and being active in her school and everything, and now she, they just locked her up in a mental hospital, and she can't, and she's like, her legs are cold, and it's just a completely awful story. It was on the Rush, uh, Rush Limbaugh. Can you say, Rush can Limbaugh you say Rush Limbaugh's family. name on my show one more time, please? Oh, oh, could it? Did you really want to say that one more time? Well, I don't want you to repeat it over and over again. I got where you got it from, but I mean, I'm like, okay. it's right. a news story sorry. on the I'm internet. Sorry, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. I just read, you know, like Drudge, you know, and different web stories. Sure. And, and here's the just, question you know, I have. Is there any instance from a medical standpoint where it's okay to take a child away from their parent? Is there anything that a child can be doing from a, from a, a parent can be doing from a medical standpoint that you think it would be okay? Well, I, I, I think maybe the extreme case would be like, like the Amish people, you know, when they have cancer or things like that. Yeah. But, you know, you got to weigh it out. you got to weigh that out because sometimes cancer treatment is so bad, you may end up dying anyways, you know. Yeah, oftentimes you're talking about yeah. uh, terminal situations there. Yeah, um, yeah it's terminal. Yeah, well, you know, here's here's an interesting one. How about vaccines? This is a situation where you're talking about a very little output on the side of a parent, but many parents feel very, very strongly about vaccines. They refuse to vaccinate uh, for whatever their reasons are. And we haven't vaccinated my child, and it's because I had an adverse reaction to a vaccine, and I know he is genetically similar to me. He's the only person on the planet I know is genetically similar to me, and so we've chosen not to do it for that reason. But... 
terrifying, horrible things can happen if you don't vaccinate. So should should we take kids away from their parents if they don't vaccinate them? And I've heard it. I've heard it postulated it's child abuse. Jacob, thanks for the call. 855-453-Free. Do you think that parents should have their kids taken away if they choose not to vaccinate? Free Talk Live, 855-453-Free. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp dot freetalklive.com on the average americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years unfortunately with taxation the rising cost of food energy housing and medical many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line is this a flaw free enterprise or is our monetary unit we call the federal reserve note forcing us into perpetual debt ensuring inflation and higher taxes these questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power, a gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. Does this ever happen to you? Moments after you're introduced to someone, you forget his or her name. It's a common faux pas you'll want to avoid, especially if you're a job seeker. And even if you're not, here's a tip. As you are being introduced, and while you're still shaking hands, smiling, and making eye contact, say the person's name aloud. Not only does that make a deposit in your memory bank, it acknowledges the other person. And that is more than a nuance, as is maintaining eye contact. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. Cutting through the clutter rather than blending into the blah, blah, blah will help you connect better no matter what the conversation. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. Fifty-five, four, fifty-three. 
You can give us a call, talk about whatever you want to talk about here on Free Talk Live. That's how we do it here on Free Talk Live. It's Mark with you. And Brett. Um, Now, on the road, anything can happen. And oftentimes, you don't have a witness. It's your word against the other driver. It's your word against the police officer. And I've got a system that can be really useful. Now, in a lot of countries... These things are almost mandatory. Cars have them all over the place because they don't feel they can trust. Uh, they, they don't feel they can trust law enforcement. They expect them to lie. So to have a camera in the car, rolling at all times with a microphone, uh, audio, uh, excuse me, audio and video, excuse me, audio, video out the front, audio and video in into the cab, and consequently out the back window. It's incredibly valuable because you never know whether you're going to be in a situation where somebody just remembers the story differently than you do. Well, you can have the ultimate wit- witness from freedomcam.net. They've got different cams over there uh, for different needs. One of them actually bathes you in infrared light, and that can be incredibly valuable. It's got your GPS on there, your speed, your route. All these things um, are things that you might need in a court case, and it's really just insurance against what's inevitable an automobile accident or, um, you know, some other situation, stop, traffic stop. It's freedomcam.net. I have one in both vehicles. The thing I like about it most, I don't have to do anything. I don't have to turn it on and turn it off or anything like that. It comes on when I turn the key on. It goes off when I turn the key off. Or, you know, actually there's a little bit of a delay because they don't want, it has a little battery in it. You don't want it going off immediately because if there's an automobile wreck and Power's cut off to the vehicle. You still want to have whatever video is going on there. But it's still like 30 seconds. Freedomcam.net. Let's go to... Brett, we'll get back to the story and, sure. and your ideas here. Um, but I want to go to Incento, calling in on w, from WNIS. Incento, you're on Free Hello. Talk Live. How are you doing today? All's well. What's on your mind? Um, I just wanted to say that I, I see your question about what we should do with people who, like, don't have their kids put on vaccines or whatever. Yeah. That's kind of a preventative thing. That's not necessarily guaranteeing some sort of prevention of illness or whatever, even. That's not a, But, like, if someone is on cancer treatment and you deny your kid cancer treatment or Jehovah's Witnesses, you deny their kids uh, stuff like blood transfusions or anything of that kind or organ donations, those people should be forced to have their kids, uh, you know, treated so they can survive. Whereas a vaccine, is there's no guarantee that it's going to stop me from getting the flu. Well, oftentimes what you, you know, have, I, um, what, what you have in these situations is the kid doesn't want it either. You know, mom and dad believe whatever they believe so firmly that they've, of course, inculcated their children with these beliefs too. So you're not just saying that the parents don't have uh, the right to make a decision, but that the children doesn't have the child doesn't have a right to make that decision either, right? Well, well, the child automatically doesn't have the right to make a decision. I mean, I'm an EMS, and you have to be like it's in by consent up to the age of fourteen. I think it's fourteen or sixteen. Okay, right? it's, well, it's fourteen. Well, that's um, also so somewhat arbitrary, it, right? I mean, it, it, that's not. It, it's not like it's impossible for somebody younger than fourteen to make a decision. You know, like that's well, that's no, a number but, that somebody decided. They, they they have the yes, but they have the legal uh, decision. Like they had the legal cutoff is fourteen years old. But whether I mean, if you're debating the validity of that legal cutoff, and we have to cut the line somewhere. I mean, you can't obviously, and I'm not trying to make a slippery slope argument here, but you can't have like a six year old making the decision, you know, making the medical decisions and assuming they're informed medical decisions. Just like you can't take someone who is basing it off of religion as opposed to science and say this is an informed medical decision. They well, know that their child is going to die. But they now, don't now you're talking about science here, and this is sort of you know a happenstance that uh, politics and science uh, collide here. But oftentimes politics is on the other side of science. So I mean, you, I, I it's. I like science and I like medicine, but I think that people have a right to make a decision for their families at the same time. I mean, we know that politicians that made these laws generally are liars and thieves, right? Well, yeah, that's true. There you go. So, I mean, it's not like you're talking about justice here. But they would see them themselves as no, protecting no. a child from I mean, parental ignorance in this case. Sure. Yeah. But they want to be able to yeah, make the decision for them and their their kids. Yeah. 
And one thing you don't know is is that if you turn your child over to a doctor or an EMS worker or somebody like that, they can make a mistake too. So there's the uh, the Hippocratic oath says first do no harm, correct? Well, yeah. But your job is to get in there and begin manipulating reality, which I think is a good thing. I'm not I'm not saying it's a bad thing. So really medicine is in fact a violation of the Hippocratic oath from the very moment uh, moment it begins. Well, no, because what you have to take just take into consideration the fact that when I come in and some guy's in cardiac arrest, or when I come in and some guy's femur is broken in half and sticking out, my, um, chances are my interventions are going to help. There's like a ninety nine. Chances like, are good. Nine, yes, ninety nine point something yeah. percent. I agree with you. Um, so I mean, it's not an automatic violation of the Hippocratic oath, is what I'm saying. But sometimes people heal. And, you know, on their own. And this is the difficulty when it comes to sort of taking things away from people. I believe that people's rights trump, sadly, trump logic well, and reason. Well, well, ironically enough, you just made a good point. Um, but for me in this case, it's kind of like I see this as the same thing as, say, vice crimes, for example. Um, when, like, people practice, you say that people practice, uh, you know, healing on their own sometimes. Well, uh, if you want people to have, you know, the best chances of surviving and you want people, you know, to be the best off, then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to have a legalized, regulated industry where everyone uh, has the right and everyone is guaranteed that they get services. Just like, you know, I, I, like with pot legalization, for example, I believe, as you believe, as libertarians, that when you legalize and regulate something, it benefits people as opposed to, you know, saying, okay, uh, you don't have to do this. You can go off and do your own medicine. We're going to not regulate the medical industry. We're not going to regulate, you know, we're just going to let this Jehovah's Witness have their son die. We're going to have this person who believes this crazy flying spaghetti monster, you know, he's going to do this. Does that make sense? Well, what doesn't make sense is the regulation part. Generally, when you're talking about um, the government being involved, it, it it puts in it puts in place an organization that's a monopoly. Monopolies tend to not be motivated by uh, the rest of us because they have uh, they have no motivation. So, if you allow the marketplace to decide who's going to get the business and who isn't, there was a time in this country about the turn of the uh, the last century, not the most recent one, but the one before that, when there was no, you know, there was no FDA. There was no, um, you know, none of these alphabet soup organizations out there uh, to regulate things. There was all yeah. different kinds of medicine, and people got medical care. This can become a very complex subject, too, because as regulation increases, control goes into fewer hands, and that means fewer hands that need to be greased by maybe certain industries or corporations that can benefit from uh, the regulation over a certain industry. And I know that's not specifically what you're talking about here. This is a very difficult subject. Incento, thank you so much for the call. 855-450 free, free talk live. How can you save a ton of money and prepare for emergencies? By having your own in-home freeze dryer from Harvest Right. Now you can cut down on wasted food by freeze drying your leftovers. That's right. Create your own long-term food storage by freeze drying your own fruits, meats, vegetables, even complete meals with the Harvest Right in-home freeze dryer. Imagine the savings and the peace of mind. See how the amazing Harvest Right freeze dryer works at HarvestRight.com. I'm David Cordani, President and CEO of Cigna. We're proud to support the March of Dimes by walking in the March for Babies. It feels great to know that the money we raise funds life-saving research and programs that improve the health of babies. With your help, we can make this year better than ever. Join Cigna and our coworkers across the country in March for Babies to help more moms have full-term pregnancies and healthier babies. Start your team today at marchforbabies.org and march to help our babies. Thank you. 
Free Talk Live. Your show is dangerous for people. Yes, it is very dangerous for the state. It's dangerous for the status quo. It's dangerous for the status quo, Bob, and it's dangerous because people like you who only want one particular message, and that is crack down, put all those people in jail. We need to bust the border up and we need to hurt peaceful people. That's what your message is. Yours is the real dangerous message because you're the one who's advocating aggression against peaceful people. Don't you think that's shameful? No, I think if it's against the law, you shouldn't be advocating against the law. I'm for the law. Ding, ding. And if you break the law, hey, it's, it's... In the 1860s, it was against the law for black people to escape from their masters. Do you think they should have been brought back? No. Okay. Not. You're a lawbreaker. The United States made it against the law for Indians to uh, mix with white people. Do you think that that was a good law? No. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit LibertyOnTheRocks.org today to get started. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. We know you're out there. We can feel you now. We know that you're afraid. You're afraid of us. You're afraid of change. We don't know the future. We aren't here to tell you how this is going to end. We're here to tell you how it's going to begin. We're going back to editing the next edition of Freedom's Phoenix Digital Magazine now, where we are telling the people what you don't want them to know. We're showing them a world without you, a world without rules and controls, without borders or boundaries, a world where anything is possible. Where we go from there is a choice we leave to you. Subscribe at freedomsphoenixeasy.com. That's freedoms with an S, phoenixeasing.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. You can call in and talk about whatever you want to talk about. It looks like we're talking about parents having the right to decide what medical treatment, you know, for their kids, whatever that medical treatment might be. Um, You know, the Free Talk Live kind of goes this way. People call in. We talk about something. It incites people. They call in. We talk about something else, and then it moves along. And that's that's really the the idea behind Free Talk Live. Um, You can call in and talk about whatever is on your mind and there's really no forum for that most of it's about (laughs) whatever the expert talk show host wants to talk about um and that's uh that's not you know that that's not the you know the people's show free talk live wants to bring it down to you now here's what you can't expect from me you can't expect that i've spent four hours today researching vaccines I can't be your vaccine expert. I can only know about vaccines, what I know about vaccines, because this isn't what we brought in to talk about. I'll I'll research a topic, and sometimes we'll be on that topic, sometimes we won't. But you can call in and talk about whatever's on your mind at 855-450-FREE. It's Mark with you. And Brett. And I would never, I I do not talk about this topic because people people have asked me uh, to talk about it on, on my show. 
And I say, I'm not doing the, I'm not doing the research. It's too volatile a subject and there's other places you can go. And I encourage you to do your own research, invest a lot of hours before you're talking to anybody about it because it is such a controversial subject. Then it's like a dangerous subject to it's, give it's bad a, advice. It's a libertarian third rail uh, because they're on both sides of this. There's the uh, sort of the science-based liberty folks who are the skeptics and, yeah. and that sort of thing. And then there's uh, people that are uh, they're, they're far more concerned about, uh, I don't know, mass extinction. I'm not exactly sure what they th- um, the, 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 the point is. Um, <clears throat> we chose not to vaccinate my son um, at a young age, but we took a calculated risk. The fact is, is that most kids get vaccinated at a young age. They're probably not going to come in contact with somebody and get the mumps, the measles, things like that. Um, and we can give the vaccine one at a time over a course of uh, weeks and see how these things go. But that's kind of playing off of the herd immunity of uh, the other folks. Yeah, yeah. Now, I don't think I have any obligation to the other folks when it comes to herd immunity. Um, I mean, if you've got a cold, do you have an obligation to stay in your house and under covers? What about the people who live in the house? Um, I mean, what obligation do you have to the viruses, um, to other people for the viruses you care you carry? And I think that it's, a, it's an interesting question. Or, and- well, there are certain viruses that you would want to let people know about before you did certain things with them. Yeah, like there's the old story of the, uh, the, the hooker that said, welcome to the wonderful world of AIDS written on lipstick. <gasps> on the- no. Yeah, you heard that story. I don't oh. know if it's true, but it's. Uh, I'd love to see a picture of that uh, but you know it's probably before cell phone cameras let's go to dave calling in from miami dave you're on free talk live what's on your mind hey hey i was glad to hear some of your comments on parenthood and um uh, mark i was just wondering how you feel about um you know the guy that you murdered how do you think his parents felt about him I didn't murder anybody. I did go to prison for a second-degree murder charge, um, but I, I never killed anybody. I happened to be in um, in a location where somebody else killed somebody. and That's so, what you claim now. Well, what do you mean? Well, apparently you were claiming that you were one of the people that strangled him. Um, that was in the news reports. That yeah, you there were, is a news report out there that, that says that. So there's a news report yeah. out there that says that. Do you believe everything you read in the newspaper? Uh, No. Okay, but I good. believe that you were convicted of. But I believe that you were convicted of murder. It's the correct. I, I, I and absolutely. Just, and I'm was. just wondering. I'm just wondering how you think that that guy's parents feel about that. I don't and know how old they are. They probably aren't very happy about that. You're such a big proponent of restitution. Why don't you do some cut sort of restitution? For I, us? I'm glad you asked because I have done everything that a that the only arbitration organization that existed at the time asked me to do. I did my time. Oh. I completed it. I've actually done many things, uh, you know, since then and sort of uh, with the intention of living a better life. But, you know, what what, oh, what would you personal, expect? me Here, David, David, wait a second. What do you want me to do? Because yeah. this obviously has affected your life. This isn't the first time you've called in on this. What? No, oh, okay, because this call sounds like it has an agenda, yeah. and I, I don't know how this. I, I don't know how this started. Could could we actually just uh, just for my sake here, and maybe for the sake of of the listeners, could we maybe David go through your your, your history or your your opposition or or whatever whatever the anger? What, what was the starting point of your anger? Because like this isn't really anger? genuine curiosity that you're expressing here. I mean, this is this is no, definitely just, a I dig. Did. So what's what's it all about? Just so we can understand it, the best way you can describe it. Uh, I think that would be really helpful to all of us. Hypocrisy. So because I've done something wrong in my life. Something very, no. you know, very wrong. I can't have no. a moral agenda. Because not at all. Because you're someone who proposes for personal restitution. I Yet do. You have done nothing. I think it's a better you have system. Done nothing. You have done nothing for the family of the guy that you murdered. Well, have you? here, let me ask you this, David. I don't know where these people are. If I spent the time and energy to go hunt them down, do you think that they'd want to hear from me? You were involved with murdering their child. I, I look. The fact is, I have these probably people are probably in India. They're probably not anywhere near here. And I don't. You didn't answer my question. So you didn't a- yeah. answer my question. Do you think they yeah. want to hear from me? I have no idea if they do or not. I don't either. 
So I figure if somebody I'm wants ready. something from me beyond but what the arbitration it. organization at the time said that was uh, said that was I was obligated to do. This was before I was released by a ruling of the Florida Supreme Court, which you never want to mention. That doesn't matter to you uh, because all you want to talk about is the bad stuff in my case. It doesn't matter that there's mitigating circumstances. It doesn't matter that the Florida Supreme Court um, that I was released by one of their orders. None of that stuff matters to you. Now, here's here's what I've noticed over time, David. Usually people who bring this up are in one of two camps. Either they're a frustrated talk show host that wishes that they could have a job like mine and forget about the fact that I've worked very hard to get here, or they uh, disagree with me politically. Do you fit in one of those two camps? Uh, I would say I disagree with a lot of your political views, but certainly not all of them. Okay. Well, how could anybody disagree with everything that somebody believes? Will you give me a percentage? Well, yeah. Uh, well, it depends on how much of a zealot you plan to be. What do you mean, how much of a zealot I plan to be? I'm as much of a zealot well, as uh, I am. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I would say I probably disagree with about 40% of your political So views. what you've done is you've found uh, the, my weakest link, and you're exploited. Do you think that that sounds like a good guy or a bad guy? I, I really, here's what I really don't like. Okay. Here's what I really don't like is people who go on these moral uh, – high ground things like you do all the time. What's an example of yeah. a moral high ground thing? Uh, claiming how great the liberty movement is. That's not a moral liberty. high ground yeah. thing. Give me a specific yeah, well, moral know, where Mark has put himself or somebody like Mark or me or you know who has put, well let's use Mark because that's who you're kind of attacking here where what is, what is what is well okay uh, what is not an, literally attacking. <laughs> what what uh, is an example like a specific of moral high ground that Mark has tried to put himself on on this show. He thinks his views are superior to other people. You're not giving me anything specific. Well, That's not view, moral okay, high ground. So this is so what you're claiming is that you are making an ad hominem attack because you cannot, uh, you will not confront my views, right? You're saying I'll attack the man because you disagree with me on a point. That is, no, it's, it's a hypocrite. logical fallacy. But you won't give us no. an example of a specific, like, where, where, has, where has Mark morally shamed somebody? I know, I'll tell you where he's a hypocrite. Yeah, you're telling me where I'm a hypocrite because you claim that I haven't, but um, that I haven't made restitution to this family because, because I advocate I for restitution. You a couple of weeks ago, I asked you a couple of weeks ago if you thought more, uh, restitution was good, and you said it's the best thing you can do. It's the best, it is the best nothing. system. You know, yeah, David, but, but David, here, let me ask you this, though. It. David, the family wanted and they got, apparently, I mean, I don't know. They didn't, they didn't, uh, they didn't claim otherwise. They wanted me to go to jail. They got it. I went to jail. I was re later released by the Florida Supreme Court, but they got what they wanted. At this point, all you know is that they got what they wanted. Nothing else. Thanks for the call, then. You know? That's the reality of being convicted felon. 855-450 free. Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase... 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world. And one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends. To prove just how good it is, we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience. All you do is cover shipping. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Buzzbox Coffee is organic, so it contains no pesticides or toxins. It's shade-grown, so let's Less acidity and no heartburn. It's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. For over five years, you've been hearing about the Berkey guy, so you may know a few things about him. For example, you are well aware of the superior quality and effectiveness of Berkey water filters and accessories. But did you know the Berkeys have had independent lab tests done to prove just how effective they are? It's true, and he can email you the test results. Just visit GoBerkey.com. You may also know that the Berkey guy has helped tens of thousands of people get better prepared. Now here's something you may not know. GoBerkey.com has amazing specials and deals all the time on a wide variety of survival and preparedness products. 
most ready to ship same day. Visit the Berkey Guy at GoBerkey.com and be sure to click the red Products on Sale Now button. You can always call toll-free 877-886-3653. Again, that's 877-886-3653. GoBerkey.com, home of the Berkey Guy. If you are like most people, chances are you're malnourished. Most people do not get the 90 essential nutrients the body needs to survive. This lack of nutrition can lead to all sorts of health issues. If you don't feel as good as you'd like, or if you're looking to get a jump start on a new, healthier you, Longevity has your answer. With the Healthy Start Pack, you get all the nutrients your body needs. With all 90 essential nutrients and 115 fruits and vegetables, you get a supplement system that is antioxidant rich and beyond compare. The Healthy Start Pack includes products backed by 40 years of science and millions of dollars in research, like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, EFA Plus 90, and OsteoFX Plus. To order your Healthy Start Pack today, call 607-739-5595. Again, that number is 607-739-5595. Once you start taking the Healthy Start Pack, you will see and feel why our motto is 90 for life. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear? ManVentureOutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices. Ammunition, knives, firearm accessories, archery, air guns, scopes, binoculars, laser sights, tactical flashlights, fish finders, and boating equipment. ManVentureOutpost.com is family owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. Live, 855-453. You can call in and talk about anything you want, as evidenced by the last call. Sure. Um, you know, the, the fact is, is that here on Free Talk Live, we have a very minimal screening process. You know, uh, one of the harsh realities of radio is, is that people are tuning in and tuning out at all different times. They don't, uh, they don't even necessarily know who they're listening to. The caller, Dave, I assume that's his, I assume that's actually not his name because he always, uh, at the very least, he didn't call in from the same place as uh, last time. And, uh, you know, he just says a different, um, different place. That's fine. He can, you, can, you can give an anonymous, you can get a pseudonym and a pseudo place and a variety of things. But I think that it's worth, you know, the audience probably who's still hanging on is, is wants to know my reaction to him calling me a murderer. And it's a reality, right? Like, I was convicted of murder when I was 17 years old. I was in a hotel room where a friend of mine had, uh, you know, got me there under false pretenses. I thought that I was going to uh, be buying some cocaine. And he attacked his former boss. He told me that, um, you know, I got, was under the impression his boss was a cocaine dealer. And he attacked his former boss. And, um, you know, he was he, my friend called me for help when he was not doing so well in this attack. Now, I didn't know what was going on. I didn't have a backstory. I did strike that man. Mm -hmm. I struck him. And um, as a result of my action, that guy lost a fight and my friend strangled him to death there in front of me. Mm -hmm. um, that's the reality of the situation. I'd like to point out that there were three people in that room. Two of them are dead. My co-defendant is dead. He was killed by a person he committed a crime against later on. That's the story, at least. It's difficult to know for certain. I have gone on and, you know, after having been in prison and then, like I said, released by a order of the Flor Florida Supreme Court, gone on, I got a family, I built a job, and done what I've done. I've done everything that, uh, the, that the prison system would have ever asked for me. 
Yeah. And I've done everything that the victims would have asked for me through the uh, ju- judicial system. No one's asked me to do anything more. So, you know, I he, mean, if somebody knows you, too, it's like that that caller. I mean, I, it's unfortunate that somebody can call and kind of troll a show like this just out of their own anger and insecurity and maybe appear to some people listening to have the the upper hand. But to somebody who knows you, that just looks so ridiculous and, and petty. You know, like you couldn't know any less about what you're talking about. You couldn't know any He's less researched. about him. Well, I mean, OK, yeah, he could know a lot about you when you're 17 and he can know a little bit about you now, like how 40 well, percent of the things you say make him feel uncomfortable. But what he knows is that he doesn't want to talk about the issues. He wants to take an, a, a full on the, 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 the most egregious ad hominem attack he can. Absolutely. And that's what yeah. he wanted to do. Now, yeah. let's, I don't want to take up a bunch of time sure, talking sure. about these things. So I want to go to the calls. That's what this show's about. And uh, let's go to let's go to Dave calling in. I don't shoot. I don't know where Dave is. He's on Skype and it doesn't have that uh, information. Dave, what's on your mind? Hey yo, hey, you doing? from long Montana. Live free, long live free talk live, man. Salute, Mark. Thank you, Dave. That guy, that guy showed by his fruit that he was the the wrong one. He said he put you down because. You chose the high road, the moral road, and look, you know that. It, and you sh- that that's to be praised, man. You know that what you went through and did your time and and come out thinking that way because p- prison poisons ninety percent of the people, and they always recidivate or whatever reciprocate. <laughs> recidivate. I don't know if recidivate is a word, but it's it's that it refers it's recidivism. to recidivism. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 you got it. And uh, that guy just showed his, by the fruit, by his fruit, man, he showed his evilness, what he was up to, man. And uh, I just, I I say, salute, Marco, hey, free talk live, viva cannabis. And I want to talk about the the vax. The vat? The vax. Vax. Okay, go ahead. Real quick. Yep. Uh, That was the first fight me and my wife had, so I conceded. He got the vaccination. He got sick as a dog. She she cried, with broken heart, and we never got a vaccination again. I signed the religious exemption for 13 years. No problem. Go ahead and do it. You just go to the school. You say you want the form for the religious exemption. They give it to you. You go get it notarized. You bring it back, and you you don't have to put animal pus in your kid. <laughs> Well, uh, you know, I mean, I, I think vaccines work, but I do think that they oftentimes, I mean, every medicine has a has side effects and it can be a difficult decision for a parent to make. Uh, you don't know how what the reaction is going to be. You don't know what the side effects are. And here's what the worst part is, is that companies that make vaccines are shielded from uh, lawsuits uh, yeah. surrounding it. Now, there's a there's a fund that's put in place so that people who have uh, you know adverse effects, they can be paid out of this fund. But uh, the companies have a tax, essentially, some kind of tax on every vaccine produced that goes into this fund. So yeah, they can't be a, sued beyond it's that. It's all a scam, man. And then, you know, say if I wanted to give my kid cannabis, you know, because he's got cancer and give him oil. What, they're going to take my kid away because I could grow a plant? That will cure them. Uh, Dave, they, they probably will, and that's the problem. And, I, I really appreciate and, the and call. Then, and, then, uh, and then taking away for money. Say if I don't have enough money to get my kid a certain treatment, what then what? They're well, going to we'll take my kid away? We'll just put the ACA in place, and now you're in good shape. Thanks for the call, Dave. <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing. Is, uh, you know, it, it, just, it passes down more control. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I just, I, I, again, I find this to be an incredibly difficult and nuanced subject to talk about because there's all different areas of medical needs and and medical treatments, and I, I wouldn't. I mean, when people use language like it's all a scam, uh, too broad a brush for I me. I think vaccines work. I think that they have side effects. Yeah, that's what I think. Um, Wit, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Quickly, I just want to like to say I would love one of these days to have a back and forth with you, Mark. Me too. And I have very low expectations <laughs> just I don't, uh, of you, literally, because I don't expect to agree with you or you'd agree with me because that's when I call in when I disagree with you or your your friend. I, and I should like to note for the record who accuses me of being rude. I called yesterday to ask you a simple question. I wasn't on and yesterday. Not only did you... 
uh, I asked, was it two days ago? Forgive me. It was Thursday. All right. Yes. And not both of you interrupted me while I was asking a question. But my point is that uh, Ian is why I left the Libertarian Party. And I know you knew Ian before, uh, beforehand? No. Okay. The Libertarian Party is overpopulated by smug, hateful, prejudiced uh, people like Ian. It certainly doesn't they're, get anything at, done. He's actually a totalitarian in thought. Cause, and by the way, the low expectation of you, Ian, since you're a member of a peace church, I guess you go and meditate. Lying for one's cause is wrong. Lying Ian for does one's it cause? all the time. He smears me and calls me a bigot and, t- and says things that I never said. And then when I call him out on it, he makes fun of me and calls me rude and calls me a narcissist. Why do you I think he called you a bigot? A on, I, well, didn't, I didn't call you. I spent an hour and a half, by the way, on Thursday's show talking about a little brush with a lawyer. A, a boring story that was all about him for an hour and a half. El- those things are not interesting to me. But he called me a bigot, Brett, because... I like to make fun of Islam and Islamists uh, believing the Quran is based on a true story. And one of these days, Mark, I'd like to have a conversation with you about how many Islamists do you think there are? And they do want to kill you and me, and that bugs me. I do care if they want to kill you and me and innocent people that well, want to live free and then die a free and natural death okay. and not be blown can I, up can I answer? by somebody that thinks Allah commanded them to kill me well, or I think you. That, I think that there were fewer... Uh, Islamists before the United States began uh, aggressive intervention in the Middle East. Okay, I know that. I know that you believe that. And I'll quickly respond because I've already responded to this. Okay, we uh, killed a lot more people than Who's just we? I didn't kill anybody. Islamists. During the World War II, there is no blowback after we uh, bombed Germany and in, in Japan into submission. Is that an so okay? No so blowback. this is what I want to ask you. And there's three countries Wait, now, and they're really rich and they're prosperous. This is what I want to ask you. We don't have any blowback from Japanese or Nazis, do is, we? Is that what so you're saying? It, Wait, wait, wait! You, you said you wanted to have a back the, and forth. What is the common denominator in, in east of Israel, though? The blowback that you say is our fault. This What's guy needs his own denominator? show, right? Like you don't want a What's back the and forth. The common denominator is called the Hadith. It's called the Quran. That's the common denominator. I got to go to work. Thanks for taking okay, thanks. me on. Um, so <laughs> that the back guy and forth. isn't interested in conversations. <laughs> there was blowback in World War II, by the way, a different kind of blowback. Uh, much, uh, you know, much lower, and I think that there's an argument for it. But basically, what he's saying <laughs> is, is that we need to bomb the Middle East into a into the Stone Age, past the Stone Age, because some of it still is in the Stone Age, practically, um, and. And then, then we'll have good results. That's nuts, in my opinion. I am not interested in that in, in that uh, system. So to me, that's it's something I don't want to participate in. 855 450 free free talk live. People are waking up. People are saying no to GMO, gluten, toxins, and sugars. The masses are moving to holistic, natural, and organic foods and supplements. Life Change Tea is a non-GMO, gluten-free product that helps your body overcome sickness and obesity. You need to order to experience the change. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Or call us at 928-308-0408. Again, 928-308-0408. You need to order to experience your health change. GetTheTea.com. Here's something you don't hear on the radio every day. Someone who can't see. I am totally blind, and I go through periods where I'm unable to sleep at night and feel like I'm constantly running but can never quite catch up. But this isn't a sleep problem. It's something called Non24. Learn about the link between total blindness and your symptoms. Visit learnmorenon24.com or call 855-856-2424. Sponsored by Vanda Pharmaceuticals. MindThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free. It doesn't require a big-time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to MindThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MindThings.com. 
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty News and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, April 2nd, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,290, silver opened at $19.97, and Bitcoin is trading at $482.10. Support for Liberty Beat comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org, now offering an eight-week course where you can learn to treat the most common family ailments with simple medicines that you can grow or easily find. Learn more at GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. Support also comes from Bitmain Tech, creators of the newly released Antminer S2 Bitcoin Miner. One terahash and only 1,000 watts. Order yours online today at bitmaintech.com. And support comes from Affordable Sound, CD and DVD duplication along with posters and promotions materials. Online at affordablesound.com or call them 512-459-5253. In the news, since the IRS recently ruled that Bitcoin is property and not currency, how can it be used in the crime of money laundering? That's the question being asked by the lawyer for alleged Silk Road operator Ross Ulbricht. Forbes reports that attorney Ross Dradel has filed a motion arguing that all charges against Ulbricht, including money laundering and conspiracy to traffic in narcotics, be dismissed. More controversy in Albuquerque, New Mexico, where eyewitnesses are questioning the shooting of a fugitive by deputy U.S. Marshals. KRQE is reporting that witnesses claim that Marshals, when they encountered the wanted man sitting in a car, gave their commands to surrender, and immediately opened fire. Eyewitnesses say the fugitive was not armed, sitting with his hands on the steering wheel. He was transported for hospitalized treatment. The outrage follows last Sunday's massive protest in Albuquerque, held to voice opposition to last month's fatal police shooting of homeless resident James Boyd. In an effort to combat food shortages and hoarding, the Venezuelan government has introduced a new identification card system for purchasing food. President Nicolas Maduro stated that the new measures will reduce black market sales of food products. The new measures include fingerprint scanning, taking down cell phone numbers of customers, and banning miners from purchasing food. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Sovereign BTC, media, marketing, and consulting for the Bitcoin ecosystem. Operated by Liberty Beat founder John Bush. Online, SovereignBTC.com. Support comes from The Corey Moore Show, live Friday nights, 9 o'clock central, CoreyMooreShow.com. And support for Liberty Beat comes from Roberts and Roberts Brokerage, Inc. Precious metals at reasonable rates since 1977. Online at rrbi.co. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, April 2nd, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. A controversial classified Senate report on torture concludes that waterboarding and other torture methods did not provide key intelligence in the search for Osama bin Laden. According to the Associated Press and the Washington Post, U.S. officials who have seen the report state that intelligence of significance was not gained through torture, and in some cases, the CIA lied about the effectiveness of information gathered using enhanced interrogation methods. On Sunday afternoon, between 100,000 to 500,000 Taiwanese citizens took to the streets of Taipei to protest a possible international agreement with China that they believe will hurt the sovereignty of their nation. The so-called Sunflower Movement has been occupying Taiwan's legislature for two weeks. At one point, nearly 20,000 protesters held the presidential office building. Concerned citizens believe the Cross-Strait Trade and Services Agreement will give China more influence over Taiwanese matters. NATO announced a suspension of all practical civilian and military cooperation with Russia on Tuesday, condemning the country's illegal intervention in Ukraine as Moscow turned the financial screws on Kiev by hiking the cost of gas. Al Jazeera reports that NATO foreign ministers have issued a strongly worded report that says the Russian takeover of Crimea represented a violation of Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity. 
Support for Liberty Beat comes from Central Texas Gunworks, CHL courses, self-defense training, and firearm sales. Give them a call, 512-731-3585, or online at centraltexasgunworks.com. And support comes from Cabo Bob's, Southwest Burritos with homemade tortillas, online at cabobobs.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, April 2nd, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Remember, spread liberty with a smile. After notifying students that there will be no awesome events happening on campus this weekend, Hamilton College Activity Board Coordinator Jessica Wilson from the class of 2015 spoke to Onion reporters about the disappointingly empty days ahead. On behalf of the entire Campus Activities Board, I would like to truly apologize for failing to live up to the standards expected of us from everyone on campus. And the fact is, we let the school down. Wilson said that while the board is usually proficient at booking plenty of cool events for all students to participate in, the upcoming weekend will have no interesting lectures, no wrestling match against Amherst, no acoustic coffee house, and no outdoor movie screening of Silver Linings Playbook. We tried our best to organize a foam party in Dunham Quad for Friday night, but all the foam machines were rented and we failed. This falls on us. We realize we don't deserve your trust yet, nor do we expect it, but we'll do everything we can to restore your confidence in us, starting with a comedy hypnotist show on Thursday at Minor Theater. Tickets are $5. This is the Onion News Network. That's 855-450-3733. That is your phone line to call in and take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. 855-450-FREE. Or you can call us on uh, Skype using our username is lrn.fm. If you uh, send a request during the show, we'll approve it. And then you can call in uh, on Skype. lrn.fm is the username. It's Mark. And Brett. By the way, Free Talk Live has tons of archives, archives going back for many years. Free Talk Live is on seven days a week. We haven't missed a live show, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Independence Day, it doesn't matter, for years. And you can get all those shows for free by going to archives.freetalklive.com. All the other talk show hosts out there, they, they'll give you that service. They'll, they'll sell you a new podcast, but they're going to charge you. Free Talk Live, it's free, right on the website, archives.freetalklive.com. You can get the last seven days right on the front page of Free Talk Live at freetalklive.com. It's good, too, because people can go back and hear you being right about things for, like, years <laughs> You know, instead my opinions, of just today. My opinions have changed over time. It's you're, you're absolutely right, because when I started, I first heard this show in 2006, and you were... I was making much more of a living arguing with my co-host Ian about uh, minutia and the, uh, the liberty movement. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's true. Let's talk to Justin calling in from uh, Iowa. Justin, you're in Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Yes. Hello, gentlemen. Thanks for taking my call. That's and what we do. I would like to, I would like to speak about uh, a personal story of mine relating to your discussion about... Uh, you know, what's effectively healthcare, uh, discussion of vaccines and so forth. Uh huh. Um, I really think that something that gets left out a little bit is that health is, is, is very much a, uh, about individual choices. Yeah. And, um, it seems like there's a collectivist mindset, uh, kind of on both sides of that argument, so to speak. And, uh, my own story is about, uh, not following my doctor's advice, not about vaccines, but about my diet. And it entailed, you know, changing my diet so that it would be more like the so-called paleo diet. Okay. So they and have this paleo like, primal diet eat. where they cut out um, basically starches, almost specifically uh, wheat-based starches. So oftentimes this is where this uh, no gluten uh, craze has come from. And you say your doctor told you to do this? No. No, the, no, I was not. I was not uh, informed by my doctor in any way. I had uh, severe acid reflux, and uh, I was uh, very much overweight. 
And uh, I, I felt very, very much in despair about this whole situation. Uh, like I would never, like conventional wisdom says, you know, limit your calories and, and exercise very hard. And then someday, you know, you will, you will, you know, get better maybe. But of course the, the uh, medicine, the, the conventional medicine says, you know, acid reflux here, take this, take this pill. Yeah. Yeah. And so. I probably would have been on that, you know, the way I look at it is that I, I would still be on that pill today if I hadn't changed my diet three years ago. And, but the fact that I changed my diet is how I cured my own acid reflux. So it wasn't because of the advice of my doctor. It was because of my own, you know, research. You know, I decided I've... what do I have to lose? Now, Brett, you're a, uh, you're a caveman too, right? You Pretty the, much. The paleo thing. Yeah. And I've heard some amazing stories uh, about the the paleo diet. There was there's a really interesting one. I think it might have been on a TED talk. I can't remember for sure, but it was a it was definitely a video where a woman who had uh, MS, I believe, um, went on the paleo diet and went from being in a wheelchair to walking. And that's a pretty big difference. I have tried it and couldn't stick to it. I just couldn't do it. What do you think it was? What I I like eating carbs. Sure, I eat carbs, but I, you know, it, you have to. It it did take a lot of time, and it did take a lot of learning about well, and um, intensity in preparing food. I don't like to to. I don't like to cook and prepare food, and you kind of have to be dedicated to that. Yeah, I, that's what I found is that my whole attitude towards food had to change, and I think uh, we've talked about this on the show in the past that I think culturally we tend to not have a lot of value. Uh, for food. And, and like we were talking about, like you have a farm and you have this great learning opportunity for your son to see, you know, the work that can go into the finished product, which is food. And we can drive up to these dirty buildings and give them $6 and they'll give us a bag of crap and we'll eat it and we'll be full and that's food. Well, that's not, and, and I had the same attitude because I had a fast paced lifestyle for a long time and I understand that's reality for a lot of people. Uh, and I would say to myself, I would never spend more than X amount of minutes cooking, 15 minutes, I used to say, because that's how long it takes me to eat because I would shovel food in my mouth. Takes you 15 minutes? Well, yeah. you're going slow. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I could eat a pint in Ben and Jerry's in, in less than 10 if I wasn't paying attention, if I wasn't being careful. And, um, you know, I, obviously a different uh, ch choices and different lifestyle afforded me more time to start spending uh, preparing food and just kind of having more of a food appreciation allowed me to devote more time to cooking and more time to eating. And yeah, I mean, I'm missing a lot of things like pizza and ice cream and yeah, but uh, I, I feel like I have this this connection to the food I eat now, and and I see results from it. So, I'm I, I feel it was the right choice. And yeah, I've heard a lot of these stories, everything from obesity to diabetes to MS. Um, there, you know, mileage may vary for sure, but it's it's certainly encouraging. And uh, everybody I've heard has gone on this paleo uh, diet, and by diet I mean an actual way to eat. Yeah, they've. Uh, lost weight. Now yeah. they didn't get ripped down to uh, you know Schwarzenegger levels or anything like that, but they their their weight dropped and they sort of got to a sort of comfortable looking weight. So where your Justin? body wants you to be, Justin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, Mark. I think you were referring to uh, Dr. Terry Walls, who is actually a uh, doctor. I don't know what her specialty is uh, at the at the University of Iowa Hospital. And yeah, so she uh, she had. Um, Multiple sclerosis, MS. Okay. And that's what had uh, afflicted her for a number of years. And uh, yeah, it's a very interesting story. It's a, she actually had a TED Talk about that. Was it a TED Talk? Yeah. Subject. This is the thing that you just don't get is, is that science in this culture is basically uh, purported around drugs because that's where the money is. And there's no drug in eating uh, leafy green vegetables and uh, meat. Well, you'd be totally empowered to do all that stuff yourself. You could buy it. You could grow it. You could obtain it without 
the help of a medical professional at all. Now there is a <clears throat> there's a rabbit hole in this paleo movement, which is, says that you have to have sort of this grass cr- grown beef, and then they'll you know there's people that'll talk about you have to have this particular type of yak from this uh, you know th- this cold climate, and so there's this oh, there's all kinds of uh, money that you can spend like per pound of uh, this meat um, that I, I think that uh, you know sort of takes it a little too far. Now get with me during the break because I'm pretty serious about this, and I don't know what kind of yak I'm supposed to. Have. <laughs> So I do want to, I do want to, I want some information about that. But no, I mean, what I found was you, you had to start slow. So initially all I was doing was low carb, which included things like sausages and cheese and not enough vegetables. And, you know, then eventually I realized because meat and, and a lot of these other proteins are very acidic that I was still having a lot of the problems that he was describing with like acid reflux, burping all the time. So I realized that I wasn't eating enough vegetables and had to increase the amount of alkalinity in in my diet because I was just way, way too acidic. And um, I also probably wasn't getting the the vitamins that I needed just from meat. I mean, meat's high in like vitamin D, but um, obviously if you're not eating a lot of leafy greens, you're missing a lot of... um, uh, micronutrients. Justice, uh, Justin, have you uh, have you had any ill effects? I mean, uh, it, it seems like every issue has got to have its uh, you know its, its other side of the coin, right? Well, you've you've indicated the kind of downside, and it's only you know for me it has been it's an investment of your time to prepare food, you know, to prepare real food, and the at the expense of pasture raised animals. And I would disagree with you, Mark, that, that there's a I think there's uh, quite a bit of science behind the helpfulness of uh, consuming pasture-raised you know, animal products. Mm-hmm. Thanks so much for the call, Justin. Appreciate it. 855 450 free. What have you heard about the paleo diet and the primal diet? Free Talk Live, 855 450 free. Some clubs are pricey. 25 bucks for a cheeseburger? Some are exclusive. My family came over on the Mayflower. And some are snooty. Is she wearing white after Labor Day? <gasps> but America's Best Value Wins Value Club is just right for everyone who wants to save instantly. Value Club members get 15% off, room upgrade, and late checkout when available at most of our 1,000 hotels in North America. Go to americasbestvaluewin.com and sign up today. Now that's better. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American. Covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237 and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. 
Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. You can call in and talk about, well, whatever's on your mind here on Free Talk Live. We've been across the board this evening from uh, Common Core, uh, which is an article we read about this uh, young gal who, in eighth grade who told other students they didn't have to take this Common Core test. Likely she's parroting some things she'd heard from her parents, it seems like. Possibly. Me, quite possibly. And uh, she got suspended for it. And we've talked about voting machines and parents and vaccines and kids being taken away from their parents because of medical decisions and uh, a whole variety of things here on Free Talk Live uh, this evening. And the paleo diet, actually, the last last call. So you can call in, talk about whatever you want at 855-450-FREE. That phone line is brought to you by ProXPN. ProXPN is a virtual private network. That means online, what it essentially does is tunnels from your computer to the website that you're going in an encrypted fashion. So your internet service provider, the NSA, nobody knows what you're doing online. Uh, Hackers that might be getting in on your router. It's from your computer to the website, not from your router. And so it uh, it gives you a a secure uh, um, portal. And that's really important, especially if you're in some kind of public place or your router's uh, available to the public or that kind of thing. Because somebody can crack into your router in an entirely different fashion. They crack, crack into a website. If you try to get into your bank account, you know, there's three or four tries. They lock the whole thing down. Mm. But your router, they can just set a little little. I think it's called a black box, um, the little cracker machine on it, and just it can try passwords all day long till it finds out how to get on your router. And if it's something easy like one, two, three, four, they're on downloading child porn and blaming you for it. It's like the combination an idiot would have on his luggage. <laughs> It's from Spaceballs. Um, So just go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Use promo code FTL20. You'll get 20% 20 off their price for the lifetime of the account. Not just to try it out. 20% off forever. If you pay pay annually, it comes to five bucks a month. So... For the cup of the price of a, like a cup of coffee, you're protected. Um, that's proxpn.com slash FTL. They take bitcoins, so if uh, that's important to you, they've got a seven day money back guarantee. Proxpn.com slash FTL. Get all the privacy and security that you've got a right to. Let's go to Liberty Phoenix calling in from, I don't know, maybe Phoenix. Liberty Phoenix, you're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Mark. It's uh, calling in from Illinois. Um, I Shouldn't you to... be Liberty Ill- Illini? Well, no. Well, see, the my whole the whole thing about my moniker is I'm I'm in love with phoenixes. Like I I love the concept of phoenixes, and I really feel that the you know American government is not going to or not the American government, but a voluntary society will never come about until we fall like like the phoenix dies and then it rises from the ashes. And uh, I don't know. I just thought it was very fitting. I've been using it for a few years, but um, interesting. The reason that I wanted to... The reason I wanted to call about 
was um, I don't know if you guys had a chance to take a look at this uh, the video that was voted up on the Free Talk Live um, Reddit boards. Uh, Perhaps about what's the, the video? The students that were in the uh, that's staged a sit-in to protest the the lack of a. Uh, yeah, you know, I watched it and I was I was having a difficult time trying to translate it into something usable on the show. I mean, it was certainly disturbing. It certainly fits a trend that I've been following. What on was the, it about? Um, uh, uh, Liberty Phoenix, go ahead and go ahead and fill everybody in on it. Well, the uh, there was apparently one of the students in the school committed suicide, and the the, the other students wanted to have a moment of silence, and the the school board or the principal didn't allow them. Well, they decided that they weren't going to stand for that. And the 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 article quotes that there's about 200 students that went into the common area and just sat in and didn't and refused to leave until until they were allowed this moment of silence. Well, eventually that moment of silence was given. And afterwards, the principal is standing there walking through them, being authoritarian and berating them. However, he, he is. And he says that you know he's really disappointed in them, I assume, for standing up and you know not tolerating you know, standing up for what they believe in. And one of the other students yells out, you know, we're disappointed in you too. And the next thing you know, the, the principal's like, I want <laughs> removed. I want that student removed. And uh, a couple seconds go by on the video and you see a couple of cops literally dragging the kid away from the, uh, from the little group wow. there by his arms. I mean, he obviously, I mean, he must've just went limp to, you know, as a form as another form of protest, but yeah, I, personally, I don't think it's that disturbing. I think I think it's kind of encouraging that I mean, these are eighth grade kids, and they, these are the the they've got the the courage to stand up to their authoritarians like that. I think that's a wonderful thing, and for this for this kid to have, to say that, it really but will really would have put the the icing on the top of it if all of them would have just went limp when that happened. Yeah, it was. Yeah, you're right so, because it's a very difficult age to do that, right? Like high school kids, once they start to feel a little bit more like adults, that's where you might see some of this more rebellious behavior. You almost feel like school is intended to inculcate people with uh, these these sort of behaviors. Oh, where, I exactly feel where, where they're <laughs> that th way. That's I mean, th that's exactly what I feel, too, is that the, 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 that's what it is. It is a training uh, area to keep you from having your own opinion, not to have your own opinion. You can have your own opinion as long as you shut the F up about your own opinion. You could have your own opinion. Just sit there and be quiet while the rest of us do the right thing. Yeah, it's yeah. really what the idea is, is uh, they don't want you to stand up and you can't you can't run a school of this size. And have people speaking out. It's 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 no longer an operation where everybody's working together. It can't be. It's too big. It has to be a hierarchical organization. That's why I don't like big schools. Right. Well, they require obedience. They require conformity to, to exist. And you know, unfortunately, obedience and conformity produce uh, you know oftentimes on a lot of things intellectual and emotional apathy. And, uh, you know, maybe the school isn't used to dealing with something like this. Well, but the other thing, too, Mark, is but that's that— that's what America's full of, right? Like, they, they take a lot of truisms, and they don't question any of them. Yeah. Critical thinkers c question everything that's presented to them. Sure. And these kids were saying, hey, why can't we have our moment of silence? And I think they should have been able to have it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, the other problem here, too, is that it uh, looks like the school resource officer is getting involved. Now, I don't know. I, I, I'm i sorry. I forget where the school was. I don't know what the size. What, what Say that again. It was in Indiana. Okay, it's in Indiana. So I don't know if it's like in a big metro. Uh, I don't know what the population is uh, or the size of the school is, but there was at least two officers there. So this is another problem that's been happening in schools for a decade since Columbine. Now you're filling the schools with cops. Uh, when all you when you when you have hammers, There's, things you kids start to look like nails. Well, they're arresting kids all over the country yeah. for things as little as carving their names into desks. I'm not saying that you, a kid should carve their name into a desk, but I don't think arrest is the right way to deal with it. This is happening in your schools across this country. You don't have to believe me. You can go Google it. Mm -hmm. I think it's just a side effect of this whole zero tolerance policy Agreed. going in. I mean zero tolerance you're not gonna i mean it's zero tolerance you're gonna overreact to some of the most more smaller things that are
Thanks thanks for the call, Liberty Phoenix. I don't know what happened there. Something happened to the audio. Um, you know what it's a side effect of? It's a side effect of turning over our education to a monopoly organization. Yeah, you don't have to send your kid there, but you've got to pay for it. And any organization that's going to get your money, whether they have to serve you or not, is never going to serve you. They Absolutely. Can't. 855-450-FREE. Free Talk Live. What's your solution? 855-450-3733. Do you owe the IRS money that you can't pay? Are tax liens and levies ruining your life? Are you tired of being afraid just to go to the mailbox? If this describes you, then Dan Pilla can help. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla, and I've been solving tax problems for more than 30 years. In fact, I wrote the book that made it possible to negotiate settlements with the IRS, and I've helped thousands of people do exactly that. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. New changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever before eliminate their debts once and for all. There's no need for you to suffer another day with IRS debt. Call 800-346-6829. I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX or go to my website, TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp dot freetalklive.com Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Camano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. This is the Onion Week in Review. This week, mothers across the nation invented a new drug to worry about, confirming that the completely fictitious new substance was appearing in schoolyards across the nation and is easily created from simple household products like sugar, window cleaner, and petroleum jelly. Calling the totally made-up narcotic scramp, mothers in desperate need of something to fret over deluded themselves into constantly agonizing over the widespread drug epidemic that exists solely in their minds. My son sits in his room for hours and hours. It must be scramp. He's a scramp head. I bet they'll figure out how to scramp with this, too. In other news, a man confidently strides through a beaded curtain without parting it. A father takes a picture of his daughter every day from birth until he abandons his family. And the same homeless man is always begging for change on the same United flight. Stalled contract negotiations have prevented me from reviewing any more news until I receive a co-producer credit. But for more, visit theonion.com slash newsbeat. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. 855-453. 
That's 855-450-3733. It is Mark with you. And Brett. You can call in, talk about whatever's on your mind here on the live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live. Our normal first seat co-host, Ian Freeman, is uh, off in Florida at somebody's wedding. So, you know, he's, he's actually, you know, he's actually got a really real life, sort of, you know, a semblance of one. 855-450-FREE. So we talk about Bitcoin here on Free Talk Live because I am excited about Bitcoin. Ian is too. But I'm I'm really believe that Bitcoin is a force that can empower the individual, the the smallest minority. I think that institutions like banks and governments they don't have your best interests in mind. They have their best interests in mind. Well, Bitcoin gives you the ability to control your own wealth, to store money online safely. Now you have to follow protocols. If you don't do it right, you might get hacked. There's no doubt about it. One organization that makes it a bit easier though, the best online wallet, blockchain.info. So blockchain.info is a uh, it's a, a wallet, on, online wallet, but they never have possession of your money. It's encrypted in your browser and you can access it through your laptop or your desktop or your tablet or your smartphone. And that's what's really great about it. I can do, you know, my whatever my banking is on my blockchain account, and then I can go someplace with my um, smartphone and make a purchase using bitcoins right there. And bitcoins are getting—it's getting so easy to use. Blockchain.info makes it relatively easy to use. It's getting so easy to use. You can make the purchase faster in some cases than you could uh, making a cash transaction because you got to pull out the money, the pull out the wallet, pull out the money, make the change, and the whole thing. So it takes some time blockchain.info to get uh, the best online wallet available to you. Let's go to Dana calling in from Michigan. Listen to WTKG. Dana, you're on Free Talk Live. What's on your mind? Um, just before you went to break, I think it was Mark um, in response to the last caller, Liberty Phoenix, um, about the authoritarianism in uh, the school system. Your question to the callers was um, what is your solution? Well, I'll tell you what it isn't. It's not Common Core. And you guys started out two and a half hours ago, but it, you know, because of the nature of the program, it, it wound its way around to other things. Let me give you some facts about Common Core. There's 50 states in the United States. Not that one I knew. I knew it! <laughs> <laughs> despite, despite Obama telling you there were 57. So they're really, really, there's 50. Okay, anyway. Wait, before um, you even go on... <laughs> I'll defend Obama on that one. He, I know what you're going to say. He included the territory. No, 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 no. He was. Yeah, he I wanted to say, know. and and believe me, I don't think he's any kind of a genius. Uh, but I, okay, I think he you. wanted to say he had been to 47 states, and, in, and instead he just misspoke, and people ran away with that. Seven, yeah. yeah. And they do it all the time, but they beat the hell out of Bush. He poor damn Quail. Right. That yeah. poor guy, guy you know, Dan oh, Quail, yeah, couldn't exactly. get away from that potato thing. Right. Right. Exactly, but the, but but Obama called. Uh, he's the head of all of our military and called people corpse men. A corpse is a dead body. They're <laughs> called core. It's ridiculous, but they don't say anything against him because they're afraid to be called a racist. Okay, back to Common Core. Uh, yes, Obama administration is pushing this, but there are thirty six uh, states in the union. Now remember, forty six adopted it. Of the 50 United States, 36 are run currently by Republican governors and 14 by Democratic governors. Um, Ohio, of the 46 states that adopt, adopted it, just this past week, Ohio dumped it because of pressure from parents. Oklahoma is next. This is, and I'm saying this, you guys, uh, people don't take you seriously unless you put the F word in front of things. Well, please don't. I don't, don't. speak like that. <laughs> I, no, and I don't speak like that. Um, I'm saying the word dangerous. I'll say very dangerous. And I mean that in the traditional sense. Uh, Common Core is dangerous? Is, Common Core is very dangerous. One of the things they're going to do is they're going to do away with in cursive writing. Now, cursive? What, what does that mean? Or cursive. I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't mean to say in cursive. I meant to say cursive writing. Uh, you got to tell writing. me why you well, think getting rid of writing. cursive. I, I would love to hear this. Why getting rid of cursive is dangerous? Please. One of the things is many of our documents are written, not printed. They're written. 
And what this does is all of these things, that's just one thing, but before you ask me anything else, let me finish. Uh, arithmetic, you don't need to be able to get any answer right, whether it's addition, multiplication, division, subtraction, as long as you provide a good reason why you came to the wrong answer, it's acceptable. There are already really? some team different <laughs> cities in California that teachers' union have been ordered in not just California but multiple states. They cannot give a zero to a student. Even if they didn't show up the day of the test, they can't get a zero. If they showed up, they have to give them at least 50%. They cannot fail a student. I well, 50% is Michigan. failing from what I remember. I mean, yeah. Uh, we... No, they pass them. They pass them in the public schools. Now, let me finish what, what, what it gets worse. They're going to start testing them. It hasn't been implemented yet. But they're going to test. And I'm not, I'm going to tell you guys, <laughs> I no longer work for the federal government, but I work for the federal government, okay? Work okay. For the Department of Labor, mm-hmm. okay? So that's all I'm going to say about that. But, um, you can do some of this research on yourself. Now, the thing I like about your show is you guys say some maybe not crazy things, but some things if they were said on other shows, people would call them conspiracy theorists. But the things you say are true because they're happening now. People said this years ago before your show existed, and they called people crazy. And you know what? I'll admit it. I laughed at some of those people. That was stage one. Stage two was Stop laughing and at least listen. Stage three was, you know what? Nothing's impossible. So back to Common Core. Now, keeping that in mind, they are going to hook your children up, and they're going to be doing testing, not with number two pencils anymore. They're going to be computer testing, which makes sense because everything is computerized. They want to give kindergartners, they do in many states, computers so that they were as technologically matched as other countries. Okay, so they're going to hook them up to computers um, similar to a polygraph. And a polygraph measures heart rate, uh, perspiration, and uh, blood pressure. Now, wait, there is something, uh, before we go on, there is something that that we should just address here. And we do have to go back to the cursive thing because I wasn't sold on why that's bad. But um, what you're talking about, I haven't heard about kids being hooked up to computers but this is something that they've been talking about since the 90s, and there's a really good resource. Her name is Peg Luxick, and people can find videos of her speaking on YouTube uh, at, like, school board meetings. There's one just Google or YouTube, Who Controls Our Children? And if you have students in the school, it's definitely worth wa- um, watching this. She was arguing against this in the 90s when it was merely called outcomes-based education. But what you're talking about, I think, and I don't I, I don't know where a lot of your information might be coming from, but there is a real concern about something called computer adaptive testing. And what computer adaptive testing is, is that based on the answers that a child gives, the test restructures itself, right? So what it's allowing is for a categorization of children that, that can really help build a permanent record and catalog them into different categories, sort children. This was called the propodetic function of school. This is like the old crazy progressives from the beginning of the century. This was their dream, that they would be able to to use school in, in like school would be like a way uh, of, of forwarding eugenics. I mean, that sounds crazy, but this exactly. is all true. Now, I'm so glad. Who, you're Brett, correct? I'm Brett. I do a show about school. Okay. Called the School Sucks Podcast. Yeah, yeah, and I'm so glad that's exactly where I was going because a lot of these people, a lot of these Democrats have uh, repackaged. Hello? I, I, I hear you, Dana. Um, look, look, I've, uh, I've got to let you go. The music's playing, but I do appreciate the call. 855-450-FREE, free, free Talk Live. You know, I mean, schools and education system, it's always been used to indoctrinate. That's what indoctrination is, teaching. 855-450-FREE. 
People are waking up. People are saying no to GMO, gluten, toxins, and sugars. The masses are moving to holistic, natural, and organic foods and supplements. Life Change Tea is a non-GMO, gluten-free product that helps your body overcome sickness and obesity. You need to order to experience the change. Log on to GetTheTea.com. That's GetTheTea.com. Or call us at 928-308-0408. Again, 928-308-0408. You need to order to experience your health change. GetTheTea.com. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock-bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for under $30,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet under $30,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866-91-STEEL. Lock in your price now. Take delivery in spring. 866-91-STEEL. That's 866-917-8335. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. MeowBit is free software from the Freedom Fiends that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. MeowBit works on all browsers. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. And we'll show you how to register a .bit domain today using a few cents worth of Namecoin. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to get to your site using your .bit address in our free software, MeowBit. Go to MeowBit.com. That's M-E-O-W-B-I-T dot com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, final segment of the Saturday edition of Free Talk Live. I don't know. It's possible we might be able to squeeze you in if you call 855-450-3733. That spells free for those that care what our number spells. Um, It's Mark with you. And Brett. 855-450-FREE. And I just want to let you know, if you do your online shopping, like, say, Amazon and uh, I guess we got Newegg, other retailers there, please use shop.freetalklive.com. That, if you use that link, it's an extra click. And you can actually bookmark it so you can use it every time you use it. 
it sends us an additional like 7%. There's no, it's no extra cost for you. No extra, nothing happens to your, your service. We just get a little spiff off of it. And so I'd appreciate it if you do that. It's shop.freetalklive.com. Brett, let's go to the phones. All um, right. Got Nathan here calling in on Skype and we'll uh, see how the audio quality. Skype's warning me that something bad's happening. Nathan, can you hear me? Nathan, can you hear me? All right, well, I'm going to put him back on hold, see if Skype says it's trying to uh, get the call back. I don't know. Something's been really weird with the uh, the, the computers here uh, for the uh, the show. So we were talking about, what was it, means-based testing? Uh, or computer adaptive testing. Computer. Now, the, one of the reasons why Common Core has started to draw quite a bit of criticism from the left as well is that um, it, it wasn't done through government, right? Like there, there's a lot of opposition to it because it seems to come from private interests. Um, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation put up, I think, like $150 million. They have lots of money. They must be evil. Well, I, it's that's a tough one. I don't know about these Gates people. You know, I, I, I just don't I don't know that much about them. I know that there there does seem to be this syndrome that super rich people have where they think because they've acquired or, or they've earned. They won life. That, so they must know better than the people who lost life. Yes. Uh, there was a, a story of a billionaire uh, who took over an island in New York and started telling people they couldn't drink certain size sodas. I don't know. It's, it's stuff of legend. I don't I don't know if it's a true story or not. I think he got elected mayor. Yeah. Oh, wow. That is bad. My and, goodness. And, and, you know, I mean, this is this does happen. The fact is, is that people that do well do, you know, believe they know better oftentimes. Right. And sometimes it doesn't even mean being, you know, the uh, a finance genius or the head of one of the most successful computer companies, software companies of all time. Uh, sometimes just being like a really good comedian makes people think <laughs> that they have this power to decide how other people should live. I see. We're talking now. That's an Al Franken. Uh, uh, Bill Maher. Okay. You know, like just people. The, and, and I said, boy, this would, I, I was watching uh, his show and it was like, uh, you know, four Hollywood elites sitting around talking about how the op- economy should be planned for lower middle class people. And Karl Marx would love this, I said. <laughs> um, you know, he's a libertarian, Bill Maher. <laughs> I think it's uh, Ooh. He, he, well, it's what he claims. Yeah, he claims yeah. to be a libertarian. I like uh, people that claim to be libertarians, but um, you know, oftentimes they really misrepresent the ideas. And this is one of the things that kind of bugs me about the terminology libertarian. Yeah, is that so many people? It's hip. It's hip to be a libertarian. This is the idea that's coming. The idea of human freedom. Self-actualization, personal responsibility, peace, these things are coming. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there, there's there's no stopping them, but there's going to be a lot of caterwauling along the way because people want to control your life. Yeah. Don't you think you're smarter than the other guy down the street? Isn't that what you really believe? And if that other guy would just do the things that you think that he or she, that guy generally is he, um, but I mean, you know, I'm trying to use uh, broad strokes here, that other person would do the things that you want them to, wouldn't their life be better? Isn't it obvious? And that's where it comes from, the uh, the belief that you own other people. Because if you can control their body, control their mind, control their actions, and control their thinking, you're them. So neglecting the problems or the dangers of government, people see government as this noble tool that they can use to uh, make the world better by imposing their values on other people. Sure. Right. It's this noble tool. What they forget about government that is that every single time government is a death threat. Exactly. Because you can't get somebody to do something without threatening them um, under this current paradigm. Right. Uh, I, you know, it's interesting. If you if you persuade somebody to do something, you're called a manipulator. Yeah. Um, but, but if you get into office or, um, you know, do whatever it takes to get some social program pushed through, you're not called a tyrant. Called a leader. Yeah, you're called a leader. So if if you're willing to use the golden gun of government, I like call it a golden gun because it it somehow doesn't seem like a regular gun. It's very special. But ultimately, what you're doing is is you're agenting out force against the other individual. Yeah, I do believe that one has a right to agent out force for things like personal protection. 
Mm -hmm. So if somebody wants to harm you or something like that, yeah, you have the right to protect yourself and therefore you have the right to hire an organization or uh, work with an organization that will protect people. So I do believe that if somebody has harmed you or stolen from you, that you have a right to recompense in that in, in that area. And if that person doesn't want to work with you to uh, to, to compensate you, then I th think that there's some level of force that is moral. It it you know we have to talk about what works best, but I think it's moral. But when you're talking about somebody doing something in their own life that doesn't harm them, and you want to just initiate force against them. That's tyrannical. So yeah. if, if you know how kids are going to be best educated and you want me to educate my kid that way and you're going to steal money from me, you know, you, you'll call it property taxes. Sure. But, well, I, the problem, though, is that there's other people who have power and influence who are very invested in this idea that we're arguing against. Case in point, Bill Gates. Right, who's putting all this money up that was then basically turned over to a couple of small lobbying groups in Washington, D.C. that were very progressive. They wrote this curriculum. Um, the, the previous caller, uh, the, the woman brought up a lot of good points. Dana brought up a lot of good points and a lot of, uh, I think, legitimate fears, things that I know a lot of conservatives are worried about, the dumbing down thing, the removal of uh, more classical literature in favor of like government pamphlets like EPA <laughs> you know, all this uh, crap reports. is what's going to happen every single time you have a monopoly organization, and that's what public school is. It's a monopoly. The people that hate monopolies the most tend to be the progressives. Yeah, okay. but they want monopolies they control. That's th that's hypocritical and evil. So they didn't start speaking of monopolies. I mean, that was a name that was thrown around, thrown at Microsoft a lot. The left started to jump in. Really, like the, the the Occupy Wall Street types. They said, "Hey, man, you know these uh, Common Core. They learned a little bit about it and how heavily reliant it was on these computer tests. Well, where did all the money come from to create it? Microsoft." And that was like a uh, that gave a lot of momentum to them opposing it as well. Hmm. Of course, they probably. I mean, I don't think like Occupy Wall Street is filled with Obama supporters generally. I I hope not. I, that would be weird. I think more so than. Um, yeah, really, that's discouraging. There's a lot of there's a lot of that sort of socialism, democrat, uh, social democracy kind of thing going on in the Wall Street thing. It's a very uh, the Occupy Wall Street thing. It's a it's a very yeah, yeah, that's uh, you know, those are the ideas that I heard when I went to Wall Street and talked to the Occupy Wall Street people. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, the, it was all about corporations. Now, I don't have any love for corporations either. I think that corporations are a government construct, but I believe that the free market and people in competition provide people with the best solutions. They don't always provide the best the, the they, they don't always provide great solutions, but the best solutions. And I think that the one of the biggest problems is we have unfair courts. When the courts are bent towards corporations, you're never going to see justice. It's bent towards the towards uh, big government and big corporations. You're never going to get justice for the individual. That's the it seems to be the root of the problem is a uh, twisted court system. Sure. And I, I think a nice way to, which is we're about to run out of time here, a nice way to wrap up what we've covered here with the Common Core, one of the best ways to maintain a control structure is to have people believing that they are free, right? So you are controlling how they yep. think if you can. And that's what, I mean, even though that's what I would say the government school system was set up to do and has done successfully for over a century, now they're kind of upping it even more. So, you know, they are using these testing models to basically remediate and steer behavior to a certain conclusion. Remediation, I've often heard it used as a sales term, right? Like you want to bring somebody back to the decision, the place where they can make a decision and get them to make the right decision. Oh, they walked away again, bring them back, you know get them to try it again. And now this is just the sales. Hey, we're selling you a uh, carbon tax. You got to buy it. So we'll bring you back until you buy it. And, and that's one of the dangers of testing and, and using a curricula uh, like Common Core. Well, if you were going to shove down a, a top-down governmental uh, hierarchical organization, the place you definitely want to start are young minds. Amen. It's obvious. Yep. And, and any kind of organization.